So I do not know this bubble. This was requested. I've never heard these names in my life. I do not know who Zach Justice is, but apparently Zach Justice has some allegations against him and a YouTuber named Film Cooper, who I've seen on my feed, but I haven't really watched, did a video that was recommended to me. This was a request. I do not know these people. This is a live stream. So I am learning along with you. If I say anything that is incorrect, leave a comment, but I am not here to be the arbiter of all things true in this case, as I am a witness, as are you. What's up, weirdos? I'm a little bit nervous for this one because Zach Justice is like a very famous influence. Oh, great. Very famous, knows Barack Obama, and I have never heard about him. Oh, wait, is this this very, wait, maybe I do know this mid boy's face. Is this the very unfunny white guy? <sighs> who is this guy? Is this the guy with the really dry humor? I don't know if I like him. I think I hate him already. Let's see. I'm going in with some bias because his face looks very unlikable. Hopefully he's innocent so I can take back what I've just said, but probably not. Let's go ahead and see. Winsor. So I just want to say before we get started, I want to address Zach personally and just say, dude, Baca got a weird case. Why is he around? Certified lover boy? Certified p that's right. Listen, I did not really know about Zach Justice until the past year. For some reason, my For You page on TikTok just suddenly became infested with videos of like some slow burn romance between him and Tara Yummy taking place over, over some podcast called Dropouts. I don't know. It was the will what? they won't they TikTok couple of a month. But that's where my knowledge begun and ended, began and undid. Begended? That's all I knew about the guy. So imagine my shock when I get on my phone in the morning and I find out, oh, brother might have groomed a girl. And by might have, I mean, I have to say, might have. But before I go into showing you the videos of Zach Justice and the girl that he allegedly groomed, I want to preface it a little bit with the warning signs of grooming. This is from the official rain.org. Rain stands for the abuse and in national network. But from this uh -oh. very official source, it says that the warning signs for grooming are victim selection. Abusers often observe possible victims and select them based on ease of access to them or their perceived vulnerability. The possible victim here is Indiana, who Zach knew since she was 14 years old and, oh yes, by the way, lived with her. Oh, but oh. if he was- mm, Already, I hate all of this. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Gross? It's like 16, that's not a big deal. Yeah, 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 you're right, it wouldn't be a big deal. But when she was 14, he was 20 at the time. 20, Ugh. and she was 14. Ugh. Why is this something that we're talking about? Oh, because they had a Ugh. public romantic relationship after he lived with her and had a long history of a very close relationship with her since she was 14 Why? and he was 20. But Why? then, yeah, when she's of age, they just start dating, but that came out of nowhere. Anyways, Why? that's warning sign one. And number two, gaining access and isolating the victim. Abusers will attempt to physically or emotionally separate a victim from those protecting them and often seek out positions in which oh my they god have what is about with. to happen this is so intense already he's like reference what is even happening minors would you say being a 20 year old living with the 14 year old is access uh a clear second chick in the warning sign listen i'm not saying anything is for a fact zach justice because i know you're watching this video and we're going to get into that later with anybody that talks about this two out of five but let's go on to three trust development and keeping secrets abusers attempt to gain trust of a potential victim through gifts attention sharing secrets and other means to make them feel that they have a caring relationship and to train them to keep the relationship secret now what if i told you that in this video i will dive deep and unveil the evidence of him having a very specific connection where it was a secret and trust and it's caring, making them feel like there's a tension and special and share because that is also explicitly a factor in their relationship. Number four, desensitization. Abusers will often start to touch a victim in ways that appear harmless, such as hugging, wrestling, and tickling, and later escalate to increasingly more sexual contact, such as massages or showering together. Now, this one's a little bit tough to judge from the outside because all we're seeing is like the looks that they're actually... I feel like I was thrown into the deep end. Alice says, Brittany, you can't throw me into the deep end of the pool like this. I was enjoying the gay joy. I, I, I don't even, I feel like I've been thrown into the, what is even happening? I love the pace of this video and I love this person's set and I love this person's aesthetic, but oh my gosh, I feel like I've been thrown into a, a what is even happening already? I am shook. I'm invested. Let's go. Actually showing us into their lives on social media. So obviously they wouldn't post anything where they're like touching and being like that, but you know, they did with TikToks. Cause here's a cute little Ugh. video that Indiana posted while she was, to be clear, 17. This is like a trend where it's like, oh, her texting Zach Justice. Hey, I heard from a friend you edit videos. And Zach says, yeah, you need some edited. And she said, yeah, I'm down to give you a shot. And then cut to montage, 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 montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that right there definitely seems cool. Yeah, yeah, because she posted Posted. I'm sorry. How old is she in these videos? I miss it. Is she still 14 in these videos? 
And then cut to montage, montage. Is that a 14 year old? Is that what you're telling me? I'm confused. Is this, how old is this person with the lipstick? Or is this the grooming allegations is that he's been nice to her since she was 14 and but now she's an adult? Montage, montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that right there definitely seems cool. Yeah, yeah, because she posted this a month before she turned 18. So all these videos and oh. pictures that she's showing are memory. By the way, memories that began when oh. she was, oh yeah, 14. Cause he got- Oh, oh. Well, that's not good, is it? It's not good, is it? Why are, you, why are you touching people like that? You know, somebody said in my comment section, because I say like adults and kids shouldn't be friends. And somebody said, should I not be friends with my baby brother if that's my sibling? I'm not friends with my siblings like we're peers. Some of my siblings, sure, but not, not really. Like, are you friends with your little brothers? Like in an adult sense? Or are you are you sort of friends? Because, like, I don't know what you mean by friends, but I mean, my siblings and I are connected because we're related. First of all, I would never know my siblings unless we were siblings. Why would I know my little brother and his friends if we weren't related? So to be friends with him is only there because we're siblings. We're not friends in an organic sense. I would never be friends with my little brother unless we were related because he's way younger than me. And his friends and him are doing different things. Why would I even know them in real life? So those people that are like, oh, what do you mean? Like kids and, and adults shouldn't be friends. What about siblings? What about them? That is a completely different scenario. You live in the same house. You guys came out of the same parents or you're adopted into the same family. That's completely different than a stranger adult and a stranger child becoming friends. Like that's completely different. So all these people that are like, what do you mean adults and kids can't be friends? This is what I mean. Why are you friends with children? And even if you grow up with them, are you growing up with them as friends, cousins, mentees? Like, I understand if you grew up in a neighborhood, like a cul-de-sac, or you know all your friends, siblings, and you all grow up together, there is supposed to be a line or a conversation that is had between the parents, you know, to have conversations about, you know, what does this mean to you? You know, to have these people all socializing, when is it appropriate or inappropriate? Yeah, you as parenting to protect your kids from your kids' friends who might not know anything, right? So let's see the story. We don't know yet. And also just, okay, Bernie, I see you commenting in the comment sections down below. Identifying as a lesbian when you know you aren't one is just being called a liar. People aren't identifying with autism because they know they're lying. Unless they're lying. They do it because they think they have autism or they know they're autistic. If you self-identify or diagnose yourself with something, you're doing it, hopefully, because you think it's true. If you know it's not true and you do it, you're just a piece of shit liar. So Bernie, if you identify yourself as a lesbian when you know you're not one to try to prove a point against the woke crowd, you look stupid. Because what you're doing is a lie. That's the difference. Organic, real, authentic people who are choosing to identify themselves a certain way are having a real lived experience. They might be inaccurate and they might change their label later, but they're not lying. Saying I identify as a helicopter is a lie because you don't identify as a helicopter. You just think you're smart when you're an idiot. Use your brains before you try to up the trans because you look stupid he got hired when she was 14 and he was 20 to edit videos for her and then also for some reason he was like invited to live in her house with her mom mom what the fuck are you doing but that parents are look at the parents when shit goes down look at the parents that kind of relationship where videos like this are just totally natural for the entire time and you're like fully like touching and stuff by the way some families are like this i will say like cultures around the world are so different and unique so we need to dismantle cultural differences as well but also mm, i'm raising an eyebrow i'm raising an eyebrow in no world will any part of this be like blaming indiana for any of this like oh she's the one hugging him okay he's 23 yeah. in this video oh 23 and a 17 year old yeah some families are like this I think it's inappropriate, but what if they're cousins or what if they're family friends? And like, that's the thing, but there is an inappropriateness to it, but that's because guys, and this is what I mean to say, it's because people take things too far. People take things too far. And that's the problem. Why do you do that? Why does that happen? Why do adult people have a hard time not having loving normal relationships with 17 year olds? 
Is it just you see a 17 year old and your brain's like, boop, 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 boop. like, where is just like a healthy relate? Where does that start? Is that from parenting, the way you're raised? Like, where is it? And I think that's important. That's the problem that I want to figure out because that's the problem that just makes me so angry about people, especially men. And it's a lot of men out here having very inappropriate relationships with people in their minor years. Why are you doing this to people? Why aren't you thinking about them? Or just considering their feelings and doing the right thing regardless of how the younger person feels or pressures you. Because younger people are meant to pressure because they're learning their boundaries. You're the older person. You should have learned this by now. Older people are meant to put boundaries down for younger people who haven't figured out how to do it yet. Not by doing all the emotional labor, but by saying, hey, I know you have a crush on me and I'm older, but it's inappropriate. I had crushes on my brother's older friends and it was their responsibility not to engage with me about it. I was like 12 years old and I remember thinking this boy, oh my God, his name was Parker. He was so hot to me. I was like 12, 13. Yeah, I must've been 12 or 13 because he was like mm, 18 maybe, I think. And I just remember thinking like, oh my God, this boy at church is so gorgeous. I used to like write his name in my books. I used to like write his, anyways, it was such a girl crush, right? It was always his job to never engage with me, which he always did. In any way, my 12 year old self was like, hi Parker. He absolutely like ignored me, which was the right thing to do. It wasn't to engage with me. And even my older brother knew my older brother was like, my sister has a crush on you. So like, leave her alone. And you know, that's really important. And I would be like, oh my God, stop telling him to leave me alone. You're a kid. You're the one crushing. The older person has to be the one to say, absolutely not. It's when the older person doesn't have the discernment or the discipline or the maturity to not, that makes me question them. Like, why would you, are them old men that are waiting for people to turn 18? I'm looking at you a little funny. No offense. This is why I don't let people near my kids. Cause you think Cody Ko is going to be a good one. And he's going to sleep with your 16 year old sister or 17 year old sister. I'm dead serious. I'm sorry. But as much as we'd like to think we can vet everybody in our lives there, it's just very hard to know who to vet and how to vet them. And that's the problem. You just never know who it's going to be. Cause I'm sure plenty of us or plenty of people in Cody's life probably think, Oh, the teenage girls are safe with him. Are they safe with him? Apparently not. In a video with a 17 year old that he's known since he was 14, holding onto him like this. And you're like, okay, well that's not that bad. But then you got to remember that once she was of age, they started dating and they had a relationship. No. Do you see what I mean? I don't like it. I know in old cowboy movies is what it might be. Maybe was normalized, but I think it's weird. I do. Like it's all there. The proof is all out there. Just post it. We haven't even gotten into the video yet. I'm just going through the signs of grooming and showing you source. Zach out there going, okay, but that sign isn't source. And then me going source. Number five, the fifth and final warning sign of grooming. Attempt by abusers to make their behavior seem natural to avoid raising suspicions. For teens who may be closer in age to the abuser, it can be particularly hard to recognize tactics used in grooming. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hib says being a predator is the problem, not being friends with kids, unless your definition of friend involves being predatory. No, my definition of friend involves peer. Expectations of maturity levels being similar or close to. I do not have friends who are not similar or close to my maturity levels that I consider peers, equals, on my level. Your friends, in my mind, should be peers on your level. In what world is being friends with a kid on your level? In what way is a child on the level of an adult? Because that's what a friend is, a peer is. Somebody in your age group, somebody in your friend group should be on your level. That's why I do, you know, age gap relationships and friendships are interesting. Age gaps and friendship are interesting. I think it can indicate a lot of things. If the friend who's older remains in their maturity, that's one thing. If the friend who's younger remains in their immaturity and grows, that's one thing. But if you've got a very older person constantly only being friends with younger people, it might be a sign of immaturity. If you have a younger person who's always friends with older people, it could be sign of signs of maturity or stuntedness. Just like with the older person, it's either, you know, maybe they have young in spirit, or maybe they're deeply insecure. There's so many things that, that play into this, right? MC says, Brittany, what's your opinion on Dan Cook married to a 23 year old? He's in his fifties. Gross, disgusting, deplorable, literally grow the fuck up. But Dan Cook's a child. And I'm again, I'm not saying people in their thirties can have friends in their twenties. I'm not saying people in their fifties can have friends in their twenties. I'm not saying any of that. It's just different. Also Hibbs, nice 
fucking try. Can you be friends with Down syndrome people? Down syndrome is a spectrum and every person with Down syndrome has a different relationship. And some people with Down syndrome are completely independent, have their own lives, their families, their jobs, their own apartments, and some need family and facility care. Bernie with the super chest says, I identify as a lesbian. Why can't I? But other people can pretend to be autistic. Also hype train, whoop whoop. Thanks for your $20 to write a very fucking stupid comment. If you can't figure it out yourself, Bernie, you can go back to school, okay? You can't identify as something you aren't if you know you're lying. Are you lying? Bernie, are you a lesbian, Bernie? Are you a fucking lesbian? Because if you're not a lesbian, then you're just lying. I don't like liars. Don't be a liar, Bernie. Okay, either be a lesbian or don't. You're either a lesbian or you're not. Be alert for signs that your teen has a relationship with an adult that includes secrecy, undue influence or control, or pushes personal boundaries. Would you say that a 20 year old boy living in a 14 year old girl's house and editing her videos and having a close personal relationship with her that develops over her entire adolescence while he is the entire time a fully grown adult man and then she trusts him and is like feeling really close to mm. him and confides secrets in him mm -mm. and he has a lot of influence over her career might potentially take the box for that warning sign? I think so. So in the warning signs for grooming, we are five for five so far. Keep those warning signs in mind. But first I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, The Farmer's Dog. This is my dog Gustav and he Hi, is Gustav. a rambunctious- <laughs> Gustav is so cute. Bernie with the $5 super chat says, yes, I identify as a lesbian and sissy male. From now on, I'm not reading any super chats from Bernie that it's less than $50. That's what I've decided. Okay, so Bernie, you can super chat all you want, but unless it's $50, I'm not reading it out loud because now you're just trolling and trolls have to pay a fine. Okay, that's what you get. Michelle says, do you think it's the same for women and men? Like, do you think an older woman dating a way younger guy is the same as men? Yes, it's gross. Old, especially women, dating younger men. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you do this? Yes, I think it's fucking weird. Now, at the same time, I don't think you're necessarily evil, but I think you're incredibly stunted. Look, I have very strict, I, Brittany, have specific standards. You don't have to adhere to them. I am not a fan of age gap relationships. I am a fan of age gap relationships where the people come from similar cultures, have similar values, and they truly are on the same page, and it makes sense given the younger person's youngest age, okay? I do not like age gap relationships in general that are like 20 year olds with 50 year olds because I know for a fact those 50 year olds are absolutely stunting those 20 year olds, and those 20 year olds are absolutely hoping those 50 year olds guide them like the father they never had or the mother they never had. There's something fucked up about it and you fucking know it. And I see it in the way you live your lives. If you disagree with me, go live your life and move over. You don't need my validation. Move the fuck on. But if you want my truth, girl, I'm seeing you and you all look unhappy as fuck. Sometimes there's an exception to a rule and I live for those exceptions. You're probably not it. There are exceptions. There's 8 billion people on this planet. I don't believe in objective morality. I'm not condemning you. I'm not saying you're evil. I'm saying I'm looking at you funny. And if I can't bring it up at dinner, you're absolutely crazy. If I cannot bring up how awkward your relationship is at dinner, you must be insane. Give me the grace to raise an eyebrow. Just give me the grace to raise an eyebrow at how weird this dynamic is. And this includes this relationship thing going on with this, this guy on the internet who friended a girl in her minor years. And then can like, please. Michelle says like Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Yeah, ridiculous relationship. And where did that end up? Divorce. Where did Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher end up? Divorce court. And then he married Mila Kunis, who was his peer. Sort of. She was actually kind of a minor when they met, but you know what I mean. Conrad with the super chat says, let's ship in and out donate Bernie so he can respectfully stop. Thank you, chat. I, I know we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> I just, you know, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, let's continue this video and look at this cute dog named Gustav. Rascally and very cute. Actually, he's really sweet these days. Oh my God, he's kissing me, Gustav. Now we all know that highly processed foods aren't good for us, but why would we then be giving highly processed foods to our dogs? Cause kibble is highly- We actually just upgraded Indiana Jones's food. Indiana Jones emoji in the chat. My cat just got upgraded on her food. She's now eating a better food for her. Cause you know, she's 13 now. We're trying to encourage her long health. Process. It's subjected to multiple rounds of high heat processing, meaning that it's basically an ultra processed form of food, which is why I love the farmer's dog for goose stuff because it's made with real whole food. Yes, you can literally let's see go. It in the food. It's fresh, it's healthy. Bernie with the $50 super chat. He says, we can do it. Thank you so much, Bernie. We can do it. Thank you, Conrad. We can do it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, money for flex. Okay, thank, thank you, Alice. Let's see, how am I doing, boys? How am I doing today, girls? Huh? Huh? Okay, how am I doing? How's that flex, baby? Not bad, not bad. Okay, thank you so much for the super chat. Okay, 
Flexes for super chats. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> you guys are a hot mess and I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, listen, you live your lives, guys. Who cares what Brittany thinks? Okay. It literally doesn't matter what I think. Just like a heads up. I don't know if you know that. Meet me with the super chat. Let's go, says Conrad. Please, bro, why are you doing this to us? No. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Well, let's try to get through this, okay? 50 <laughs> get 50% off, your, off your first box. Let's go. First box and free shipping. The link in my description, 50% off your first box and free shipping. And thank you again to the Farmer's Dog for sponsoring this video. Now back to the other stuff. First of all, let me show you a clip of them discussing the beginning of their relationship so you can see how uncomfortable Zach is with this topic. As he should be. <laughs> I People actually know. didn't know officially that we dated until that podcast. Oh, oh really? No. Conrad with the super chat, let's go. Bernie is a sugar daddy and I'm only Splenda. Stop that, not true. Bernie with the $50 super chat once again. See how I honor the trolls? I honor you all. Bernie says I'm like that, you know? Shout out guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate you very much. That's some good energy, Bernie. I appreciate the good energy. Thank you for respecting the boundaries of the channel. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see what she's gonna say because I'm super curious. All right, we Gussing the beginning of their relationship so you can see how uncomfortable Zach is with this topic. As he should be. <laughs> People actually know. didn't know officially that we dated until that podcast. Mm. Oh, really? Oh. No, we kept it like really under wraps because, and I'm going to bring this up right now. Mm. Zach and I met when I was 14 years old. That's going to get clipped. <laughs> <laughs> that feels no? so weird. Zach, what the fuck, dude? Mm, interesting, interesting. I mean, it is quite controversial. K with the super chat says donating towards the more serious comments and less trolls masking their real thoughts. Interesting. So they know it's weird. Obviously, it's super weird. But on top of that, I wonder why we don't talk about this weirdness. Hmm. Why is it so weird to talk about how weird it is? But also, why would you do it if you know it's that weird also? Because you know it's weird, bro. You've known this girl growing up. You saw her go through puberty and all these other things. And then you make like, I know this is a thing that happens in other places. But here's the thing. We want to stop generational curses. We want to break those generational curses so we can move society in a better direction and a better direction is appropriate age relationships right we want appropriate relationships and the dilemma is like why if he knows it's going to be weird and they can't even have the conversation about how they met to some extent why do we do it anyways what is so special about this girl he's got to have a relationship with her ren membership for 12 months says one year baby one year let's go memberships we love to see it alice with the super chats says super chats against bernie and to make britney richer thank you guys so much thank you so much i appreciate that i really do interesting okay let's see what he says he sat there and said, well, I feel weird. Uh, I feel weird that you just said that uh, we met when I was 20 and you were 14. Good. I feel a little bit weird about that. So he worked for her mom at the time. And in exchange for editing her videos, mm. he got to live in the apartment with her. And they mm. maintained a close relationship that entire. Oh, yeah. This was this was going to happen. You know what my mom would say growing up? She would say, never put a boy and a girl in a room together. And I didn't really know what she meant by that. Where she'd say, don't tempt people to make bad decisions. And she would do this with like food. She would keep like healthy snacks in the house in order not to tempt us to gorge on bad food, right? She would like tell us not to go into the bedrooms because people have a way of giving into temptation. So this mom brought a boy into her home with a budding teenage girl and had no clue if this guy had the discipline to not take advantage of this person. And again, this is the thing where I say parenting comes into play. Parenting has to come into play. And ultimately her mother put her in this position by letting a man live in that house. And you bring in a man who's stunted in any capacity, identifies with a teenage girl, he will make a move on her. He will do it and he will justify it, period. Period. He doesn't even have to be a predator to justify it. They just have to feel close. And let's be real, how many moms would love that to happen would say, oh, I'd love my daughter to be with a nice young man who I can trust, who's a few years older, who can protect her. That's a common thing. Bryson, thank you so much for the super chat says, Bernie, read me to filth. I am broke. <laughs> okay. Love to see it. Thank you guys for the super chats. This is what I'm saying. I 
Oh, Bertie read me, read me to filth. I am broke. Read me to filth. B Bryson, which one is it? Read or read? I'm very confused on how to read this sentence. Okay. Starvo says, I'll tell you why. She's just young and cute and beautiful and he doesn't think about her emotional or mental maturity. Well, there you go. Time. And then suddenly when she was of legal age, he just decided, ah, actually, I'm starting to have feelings for you out of nowhere. I haven't had any feelings bubbling up this entire time. And actually, our relationship hasn't been at all inappropriate. I'm sorry, brother. If you are living with a 14 year old girl and you're 20 and you don't hate her guts like by the way this is going not talked about enough if that's super weird already okay let's see where he goes with it you're a 20 year old dude like a like a guy 20 year old, and there's some 14 year old fucking pipsqueak next to you you should be annoyed by that you should not harbor a close relationship that suddenly becomes romantic and once she's legal age bro bro because oh, it was right after she was 18 right they started dating oh that's the sussiness See, this is where, like, you got to have an opinionated, opinionated person in the family to be like, what is happening? I, and again, I don't know why he needs to hate her, but he probably should have good boundaries. This is this is like a perfect storm. You put two emotionally immature people in a room together and boom, maybe that's what happened. Talking a little bit in this because I want to see a little bit more. Oh, yeah. That's like Elvis and Priscilla. Disgusting. Disgusting. Like disgusting. Elvis and Priscilla is a gross, gross story. Like, it's just gross. Literally, I can't even express to you how much nothing happened. <laughs> I, yeah, I sure hope not. You're and, 14 years old. But I know, old. I'm just try I'm trying to like- Okay, I, it, like, I thought you were like backtracking like. <laughs> I, I realize I, I, this is the mid boy that I do know and I see on the internet and I always skip his videos because I could not dislike someone more. Sure. No, because it, there have been so many things on comments, reddits, like TikTok videos. Yeah, sometimes there's a reason that the entire public is screaming at you. Ah, your boyfriend groomed you. Ah. Oh, Aaliyah says the mom hired Zach for the daughter's videos. Oh, I get it. Cam Cam says muscle mommy, super chat. Muscle mommy, let's go. Let's go. Thank you so much. Alex gifted memberships. Let's go guys. Let's go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. Occasionally, that is because your boyfriend groomed you. But uh, if I would bring you back to point number- Okay, I do think it's very important. I don't know if he's going to show us the evidence that he groomed her, but I will say, and again, I know you guys hate it when I say this. This is so much more common than you think it is, and parents are orchestrating it because parents still come from a mentality of let our daughters date older men who will protect them. So it's the nice boy that we knew who was like in our neighborhood or like we let live with us or he rented a room from us. As much as you want to call it grooming, we don't know yet. So I can't call it a groomer. But let's see what the allegation is, because right now it's gross without the grooming. You don't even need the grooming allegations for it to be gross. I think it's gross anyways, but also if they really did wait for any sexual activity until she was 18, I still think it's gross, but that's better than nothing. Now, I do think they still have too large of an age gap. So she was 14, he was 26 years, she's 18, he's 24. Did I do the math right? You know how bad I am at math. That's still too much of an age gap in my opinion, but let's see what ends up coming out because this video just started. Number five on the warning signs for grooming, attempt by abusers to make their behavior seem natural. Nothing weird happened, nothing weird happened. Oh my God, he just harbored like a really close relationship with me so that when I became legal, it didn't seem that big of a leap so that we could get start dating. You know, ever since I was a minor, I've been like able to like grab him and be like comfortable around him and stuff. Like I'm just like his like koala bear. Do you know that he's fostering that relationship? Do you know that he is fostering that exact thing that's happening? If he did not want that to be happening, it would not be happening. When you are 14, 15, 16 and you are dealing with a 20 21 22 year old man they are the one who has the power to say hey maybe we shouldn't have our hands all over each other in this play wrestling fun little oh we're brother mm. sister way but clearly zach didn't have a problem with that you know based on the video evidence you fucking like idiot and this small tiktoker named xena by the way shout out xena the way i found out about this whole thing was the screenshotted dms that he sent her yeah it gets to that level and we're gonna dive in anyways she posted a video talking about the Zach Justice situation and she brought up this little video of him when he was 24 and she was 17. This is all she brought up. I'm going to show how light she okay, went on him. See. Then I'm going to show you his response. Then I'm also going to show you how hard she could have gone. And Ooh. Zach, if you're watching, Ooh. I know you are because you watched her and then you had a whole DM conversation with her. I know you're watching. I just got to say, hey, Zach, I hear you like him young. You better not ever head to cell block one. To any woman that talks to him and they in love, just make sure you hide your little sister from him. It's just a little something I came up with off the dome. Anyways, the video that 
she's talking about is this. <laughs> He's uh, chasing her around the house and then... Can you forgive me? Let's hang out. Let's hang out. I got you ice cream. We're friends again. <laughs> oh, okay. Friends. Friends. Gentlemen, in my opinion, that seems like how you treat a girl flirting with or you have a crush on. I don't know. Are these people very normie? Maybe. I'm so neurodivergent and I'm so sex positive. And I also come from a very like Arab family and Arabs like we we love to hold each other. We're very affectionate. The men kiss each other on cheeks. There's wrestling constantly. So I don't know. I, I don't know. But I would say that. I would have to know the culture and like how it works, but I would say that there obviously there was flirting happening or at least something because they ended up dating, right? Okay, here's the question. If you're 20 and you're living with a 14 year old, should you automatically look at them like a sibling? Or do you have the right to look at that person eventually as a partner? Maybe not just when they turn 18, which is a part of the problem. I think part of the problem is like, if they started dating right when she turned 18, then that means he was looking at her as a romantic option before she turned 18, which is the red flag, right? So a part of me is not upset that they're wrestling. The part of, None of that is upsetting in and of itself. I think it's the fact that they dated, right? Haley says play wrestling is very sexual in my bubble. Mm. It's only, oh, I guess that's true. If you're just like a girly girl and you're wrestling, it's probably more salacious but if you're a tomboy and you're a girl wrestling is like really normal and it's not sexualized so maybe because she's not a tomboy it feels more sexual if that makes sense because like when i wrestle it's like obviously not very sexual but if somebody who's more of a girly girl was wrestling maybe then it would be like flirting but i never like hmm yeah maybe that's the difference yeah yeah, I could see very heterosexual, very like feminine, masculine or boy girl bubbles if play wrestling could be sexual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm too gay for this. Like, look, when you're bisexual, you play wrestle with everybody and it could be sexual, but it's never sexual. So I think that's the problem is like it's never sexual unless it is. Right? So play wrestling can't always be sexual. That's so unfair to everybody involved. Is it always sexual when two guys are are like play wrestling? Is it only sexual because they like that gender? Like play wrestling can't always be sexual. That doesn't make sense. Because you only have that standard for what? Who? Straight people? Men and women? Gay people? Like who does that standard apply to? So I couldn't say that universally play fighting is always sexual, but in your bubble it might be. So in my bubble, play fighting is not always sexual at all. We wrestled our whole life growing up with our friends and family. All of our friends, like, all of our friends and family, like, wrestled. Like, everybody wrestled. The school, everybody just, I just don't even, I can't concept, didn't you guys play sports? Like, I can't conceptualize this. You know what I mean? But I could see it happening in a different bubble where it's, like, an excuse to touch them. Right? Could that be a thing where, like, oh, it's an excuse to touch them. I'm just wrestling them. Sure, I could see that. Okay. So then I can see how creepy it is, but let's keep going. Especially when, just, you know, when they turn legal age, you start dating. Yeah, that's, that's the red flags. The red flag is they started dating right when she turned 18. That's the icky part. And also their age gap is too intense. 18 and 24, inappropriate. It seems like these actions, which before could have been excused, like, okay, maybe it is just like an older brother thing, but then you dated her. Inappropriate to Britney, but also very common around the world. So it proves that you weren't not interested in her in that way. Do you know what I mean? Zach, if you weren't in a relationship with her, people could say, okay, they're just like a brother sister dynamic. But then you date her and it becomes clear that you have romantic intentions. And then mm. all of a sudden these clips look a lot more damning. Point B, mm -hmm. we're going to get into the DMs that he sends the girl who made a TikTok Ooh. talking about this, where he's directly making arguments so that we here on the film Cooper video can respond to his points. Because I feel like people aren't, people aren't squaring up on this motherfucker as much as they should because people should genuinely just i don't want to say but can i say something about stereotypes this guy looks like a little fucker this guy's this guy's aesthetic is nice but isn't he just the perfect stereotype to be a secret predator himself he's got the hair the alternative clothing the cool set that's really inviting to girls oh he's standing up for girls who've been hurt i wouldn't be surprised if in two years this guy has an allegation against him because he looks exactly like the kind of guy who ends up having an allegation against him he looks a little fuck boy he looks a little alternative fuck boy, 
but maybe he's not. So that's the thing, because this is exactly the kind of stereotype I would expect to come out in two years. I'm sorry. Like he's, he's doing that thing that the white feminists, the white male feminists do. <laughs> let's see. Let's see in two years if he's got, if he's got his own allegations, you know? Anything but like, but anyways, back to Xena. In her video, she showed this little section, which is her scrolling through old posts that Indiana made. Like, back oh, you guys don't trust him for a second. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh oh, he's exactly the male feminist I don't like. Uh oh, he's a rap boy. Ooh, damn. Okay, you guys are going hard, but you know what? It could be. It could be. When she was 15 years old and Zach was 23. And you see him liking all of them and commenting mm. on all of them in a way that's like, this guy has access to this girl in a way that you don't want him to have, especially when you know that he has intentions. Maybe he didn't then. Zach, I'm not saying you did then. Maybe you had a moral conscience back then saying, no, don't do that, don't do that. Now in her video, she's blocking a couple of them, but I just wanted to highlight, you see the end of this one that he commented? He said something dot dot dot, you're cool too, I guess. And then also this one here where he said, I'm good, frowny face. And then she said, wasn't offering you. Now. I am not sure if y'all are aware, but this is how 15 year old girls flirt. And unlike Zach, what the is only it? reason I know- Wait, did I miss it? What? I'm good, wasn't offering you. Wait, Zach says, I'm good. She says, wasn't offering you. What? I'm so, what? This one that he commented, he said something dot dot dot, you're cool too, I guess. And then also this one here where he said, I'm good, frowny face. And then she said, wasn't offering you. Now, what does that even mean? Uh oh, boomer, somebody translate for the boomer. Was it offering you? I am not sure if y'all are aware, but this is how 15 year old girls flirt. And unlike Zach, the only reason I know that is from back when I was 15, not in my 20s. Cause the thing is, Flirting with teenage girls when you're a teenager is okay. When you're Zach Justice and you have personal intimate access and you're having that kind of relationship publicly, not so okay. You creep. Anyways, Zach- What? I don't even know what he's angry about. I don't, I'm too old. This was not how we flirted at 15. So I don't know what that, somebody translate what she said. Is it basically like Zach was playing pouty face and she was like, I'm, I don't, okay. I missed that whole section because like, I can't, I needed somebody to translate it for me. Zach saw this and he decided to comment on the video. The video, which by the way, currently has only 7,000 likes. I'm not sure if you're aware, that's not that viral, but he commented, this is his official account. Look, wow, wow. He said, actually, I would never, as I am actually a respectable human being. Twisting things to make someone a villain is a strange pastime. Hey, Zach, that's really condescending for somebody who has video evidence and proof of them grooming, according to the warning signs for- But we didn't see any proof of grooming. Like, he must know he did not give us any evidence of them grooming. Like, I'm very confused. Like, did he already present the evidence of the grooming? Because I, I must have missed it. He named all of these things, but didn't actually like prove the grooming. You know what's crazy is this video has like 500,000 views in one day, but um, did I miss it? Did I miss the actual evidence? From R-A-I-N-N, -N, an official organization specifically for that type of situation. And their five warning signs are perfectly- Okay, wait, Discord said Zach always makes weird- jokes on the podcast in regards to ter uh, Tara. Who's Tara? Like old men would not like you because you look like you're 12. Isn't that the opposite of a joke? Old men wouldn't like, oh no, old men would like you because you look like you're 12. Oh, that is a joke. Okay, Discord, okay. Old men would like you because you look so tar Tara must be somebody on the podcast he's with. I don't know anybody's names. I told you I'm jumping into this bubble blind. I don't know who any of these people are. Exemplified in your relationship with Indiana. Exemplified means like made an example of. I don't know if you would know that though because your grammar is interesting with actually I would never as I am actually not good writing form. Also, it's not past time. It's actually past time spelled like this. Zach, you said Tara Tummy is his co-host. Okay, thank you, Conrad. Twisting things to make someone a villain is a strange past time. But if I were to use in a sentence, I would say that grooming a girl is a strange past time. Yeah, but grooming is very specific. I don't mean to be so pedantic, but like grooming is a very specific thing. Guys, grooming means you calculated it. You targeted a victim, you isolated them, set them up to eventually fall in love with you or want to be with you. You groom them into your arms. Grooming is not, I was in the same house with somebody and we found ourselves liking each other and I 
as the older person didn't put a stop to it. That's different, also bad, but different than grooming. Grooming is I intended for her to be my girlfriend or my lover or my whatever. Act like I'm an older person who didn't stop it from happening is not grooming, but it is gross. And that's, it's different gross. They're like levels of gross. So it's gross, but it's a different level. It's a better level, thank God, because it means that there's probably a level of biology playing a role, horniness. This is something therapy can absolutely fix. If you're an active groomer, you're going to need not only therapy, you're going to need some like isolation time. Like I don't really believe in prisons, but you know, prison time. Okay. So grooming is different. And I think think we got to be careful about that. Like grooming is a very different allegation and both are icky. Both are icky. I just think one is pretty typical and can be helped with therapy. And one needs a lot more intensive care. Okay. All right. One word, buddy. And I would say that we should send you back to seventh grade grammar class, but I'd be afraid you'd find your next girlfriend. Okay. Anyways, next video, because she made a part. And by the way, because I'm like, trying to be all nuanced and be clear about things. People think I'm automatically taking the side of the predator. I'm not taking anyone's side. I'm just letting you know, you're not going to help the world. If you think everyone is literally running around targeting you, but you will help the world. If you tell people like, regardless, if not, if you were targeting, you ended up doing this thing that was inappropriate. And the problem is, is now they're legal adults and they're dating. And so at the end of the day, like, I still think that age gap is inappropriate, but some people won't. So everyone has a different line, right? Michael says, doesn't grooming require intent? It does. So I don't know if he had the intent to groom her or if he was just like, hey, I'm attracted to this girl. And when she turns 18, I want to be with her, which is still gross, considering the fact that he's not 19, but over 20. Like he's not a young person who's a couple years away from her age. He's much older. And that's the other part that's like a red flag. You know, it's not like they're a couple years apart. If they were, they would have been able to date because they both would have been minors at the same time. Well, until they weren't, but that would have been more, you know, reasonable. So I just want to be clear that like grooming is different, you know? <sighs> Bryson says, when I think of grooming, I think of Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate is a groomer, right? It's like clear. He even talks about it and brags about it. And also, if you guys saw my update, I posted today the covering, the cover of Mr. Beast and Ava. I showed the clip of Andrew Tate bragging about having sex in his 20s with a 16 year old. How dare he come for the trans community and say the trans community, of course, they're groomers. Trans people love kids when he's a grown man who bragged about having sex with a 16 year old. OK. OK. With that said, we have to remember the mom is also involved in some aspect, right? Because they brought that he she brought them into proximity of each other. OK, so. Groomer is very specific. All of these things mean things. And it also allows us to understand how to take it to court, how to create legislation around it. We can't be switching off words, guys. You will lose your court cases if you confuse the fuck out of everybody about what happened. Think about it. If you're somebody who comes in and you say, oh, this person groomed me. And then the court sees it and goes, oh, well, he didn't groom you. You exaggerated. Now you look like a liar. Remember that if you ever want to take this, to a place where people have to then judge you, they are going to think you're a liar if you exaggerate. And then they find out it's quote, say it with me, not as bad as they thought. You want to be accurate because people will still doubt you even when you are, but the right person will hopefully react the right way to the right of like what's appropriate, right? There has to be something that's appropriate. We should have appropriate reactions to situations. We shouldn't have to go over and exaggerate to make a point, even though it feels like sometimes we have to, right? Part two, and he responded to that one as well. Hi, Zach. So happy you made it. Okay, so let me get this straight. So I'm turning you into the villain by taking things that you have posted and said and then bringing them to light. Exactly, Xena. Exactly. She goes on to make the point that I- What? What did she say? Actually, I would never. I'm an actually respectable human. Twisting things to make someone look like a villain is a weird pastime. Okay. Hi, Zach. So happy you made it. Okay, so let me get this straight. So I'm turning you into the villain by taking things that you have posted and said and then bringing them to light. Exactly, Xena. Exactly. She goes on to make the point well, that I've been making this whole time. I agree with this narrative, but he posted it, but you put the intent on the post. So it's not like he came out and said like, oh, I'm a cheater. And then you called him a cheater. He posted a video and then you decided what the video meant, right? Isn't that the problem? 
and that you can say, I didn't do it. I can't believe you would say that about me. But it doesn't really hit when the things that we're accusing you of doing are just things that you were video doing. I'm not accusing you of getting- But like on video, all you accused him, him of doing is hugging her and play wrestling with her, right? Isn't that all he showed? Man, I should be a lawyer because this shit would be easy. What do you mean? You didn't show anything on camera yet. Did I miss it? physically intimate with a young teenage girl while you're in your early 20s. I'm not. But what I am saying is that the warning signs are all there, and it's very curious that with all those warning signs, you then dated that girl when she became legal. Which yeah, kind of makes up. those warnings- Yeah, yeah, that's fucked up. I agree that the warning signs look bad, and they were definitely probably doing stuff before she was 18, or he had the intention to. I agree with all of that. Yeah, I think that is all probably true. Okay. Signs a little bit different. And when you say, come on, oh, like you're just saying these things. Well, the things that you posted are really. Okay, Bernie, I'm going to answer this question, even though you did not give me a $50 super chat, because honestly, you did pay your, you paid your price. And it's a good question. Honest question. What's the difference from a groomer and a. So a PDF file is a person who has sex attraction to people who are prepubescent. So before puberty, a groomer is somebody who picks a victim, usually a minor. I think, I don't know if a groomer, can, can you groom an adult guys? A groomer is usually somebody who's a, an adult grooming like a child into adulthood, out of adolescence and into their arms through means of like corruption for, for abusive reasons. So basically they're taking away their agency. They're using any means necessary to control and manipulate the situation for them to end up with them. So even in this situation, it wouldn't be because she was 17 she was even 14 so none of that is technically yeah but it could be grooming okay michael says for my google search yes you can groom an adult okay interesting there you go vulnerable adults i can see that happening too like you can groom vulnerable it's about grooming vulnerable people right it's like you prey on their vulnerabilities really bad Zach. but no you're right we're not referencing a video of you literally being physically intimate with a young girl in your mid-20s we're not accusing you of that but when you look at the tapestry of evidence that is publicly out there in no world are you not fully coloring in the lines of the five warning signs of being a fucking groomer that's why the stance i'm taking on no i just don't think he's right i don't think he gave us the right evidence for this this is such a weird stance this is what makes me look at him now with a raised eyebrow. The loudest people who throw stones often live in glass houses. Like, I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong, but I'm saying like, I don't know. This makes me suspicious of him now. Because even though, because he's exaggerating two minutes. If you exaggerate things, I look at you with a raised eyebrow. It's like conservatives that go way too, go way hard on trans and LGBT people. They always end up being outed as like rumors or or whatever mm -hmm. on this video is that best case scenario zach justice is a total fucking creep and that's as far as i'm willing to say i'm not i mean he definitely has red flags i don't like him i don't trust him there's something suspicious going on for sure but i don't know what it is and it's probably it could just be bias who knows but i do think it's if i was that girl's mother i'd be like don't date a guy who's in his 20s who's known you since you were a kid unless you're a little older okay and say the other things because I don't know you, but I do know what you've posted and what you have posted makes you a fucking creep. Now, Zach Justice's response to her second video was to say, you don't have to live your life filled with hate. Oh my God, Zach, get a lawyer and be quiet. Guys, <laughs> can't we all just be friends? Says the groomer. You don't have to live your life so filled with hate. See, you're calling him a groomer without the evidence. And I think you're say it's an opinion, at least say in my opinion. Like, at least say, you know, I'm not sure, but it sounds like it or say like, in my opinion, I could be wrong or like in my, I get it. I call people all the time. I say like, you got be vibes in my opinion, but like, he's so sure, but I feel like, oh, this would be so much more compelling if he gave more evidence. This video still has a lot to go. So let's look for the evidence. Guys, I mean, what are we even mad about? What mad at little old me? Guys, let's spread love. You sound like a guy who got busted for drunk driving and is actively drunk arguing with the officer. You don't have to live your life with, you don't have to live your life with, hey, like I don't need my license taken away again. It's all love here. It's like the things that we're accusing you of and saying that you're doing aren't things that you didn't do, that you have videos of you doing. Oh my God. Anyways, he went on to DM her 
a lot. This video had 5,000 likes. I'm telling you, these are not viral videos, but the links he went to in this DM exchange, oh my God. And we're gonna okay, read the whole see, thing. Let's see, let's she see. said, let's talk. I genuinely love to hear how you explain yourself. He said, call me on this. He doesn't want any okay, uh, text screenshot records. That's why he's saying that, by the way. She said, I'm at a hair appointment. Do we have to- Okay, but that's weird to need the phone call because I just, can you just record the phone call? Call? He said, yes, this is a very serious situation. It is serious for you, but like, what are you gonna change? The evidence? She said, okay, I mean, I can call you this evening. Clearly, this is a very serious situation. He said, call me this evening. If I'm on a flight and can't answer, we can try tomorrow. The behind the scenes of the things you talk about is beyond what you can think. You can hate my dark jokes, totally fine. That comes with trying to make edgy jokes, but insinuating I would or have done anything so vile is damaged. He should have talked to this girl. Who the fuck is this random TikToker? Like, this is so weird of him. This makes him look suspicious more than anything that he engaged with these DMs. Why did he care what this random TikToker had to say about her observation of his relationship? This was a mistake. This tells me something weird. See? See? What did I tell you? Sometimes it's better not to talk. He's talking, which makes him look suspicious. ...to real victims. Indiana will also talk to you as well if you'd like. But yes, it needs to be a call. It needs to be a call so that uh, you can't have the text screenshotted, but this is enough screenshotting for me. The dark jokes that he's talking about is a joke that she mentioned that he made on the podcast at Tara Yummy. You are a dream. What? Like you, you're like small and dainty, so it's like you're kind of like a kid. I'm just saying you should, you should, you could like help people. They should put you in prisons with like the Oh my God, Tara, you look so much like I mean, it's a gross joke, right? Mm, it's a gross joke for a podcast. Interesting. Like a little kid. That doesn't add any odd layers to my slow burn romance story where I was clearly playing into an attraction between the two of us. To then talk about how you look like such a little girl while also all of the warning signs of grooming are there between you and a girl that you knew when she was 14 and that you spent the next years maintaining a close relationship where you had secrecy and built trust and then normalize it to her to the point that she would then defend that relationship for you. And he shouldn't have responded at all. Diet Water says, would it be better if he responded publicly? Look on TikTok. No, he shouldn't have responded at all. Like he's in a relationship with a legal adult. There's no proof they did anything before she was a my before she was 18. Like, why would they ever talk about it? If if all their family and friends are fine with it and everyone around them is saying it's fine, then what the fuck is the problem? Obviously, it's weird and people can look at it with a side eye, but ultimately, like going to some random TikTokers DMs and now she has your DMs on screenshot and now it just it feels weird. You know? But I'm not saying Zach is innocent. I'm saying like he probably isn't innocent because he's engaging in these DMs. Like he's trying to get on top of the story before it blows up, but he does it in the worst way possible. It's kind of weird. Okay. So I don't know. Let's see. In the future after you'd already broken up. Let's not be, let's not, let's not be ridiculous. That's what he did. Wait, and what? After you broke up? are there between you and a girl that you knew when she was 14 and that you spent the next years maintaining a close relationship where you had secrecy and built trust and then normalize it to her to the point that she would then defend that relationship for you in the future after you'd already broken up let's not be like do they break up or is he just making a future prediction that when they break up she'll defend the relationship to people let's not let's not be ridiculous that's what he did and making jokes like that at tara yummy okay it's a dark joke i guess said by zach justice uh sounds like a confession i'm not saying it is it's just a dark joke but then he says insinuating i would or have done anything. hold on call me this evening okay are you he said call me this evening if i'm on a flight we can talk okay are you saying you didn't know her at 14 or 15 and 16 because that's my point that in and of itself is the issue the fact that i stated that you dated a girl you knew as a child while you were an adult like, this is all public information, but that's really normal as much as, okay, guys, I'm going to explain some to you because I know you all think the world revolves around you and your belief systems. I know you do. Okay. The world is a global place. There are so many people that are raised in the same village and neighborhood with people they knew as kids and they eventually grew up and dated them and got married. That is very common. And sometimes it's even healthy. Sometimes it is not healthy. And the question is, was this a healthy situation or an unhealthy situation? Do they engage in inappropriate behavior or do they appropriately wait a good amount of time before dating? Obviously, in my opinion, it sounds like it was probably more unhealthy than healthy, considering the fact there was no gap between them knowing each other through her adolescence and her becoming an adult and them dating. 
if she had gone off to college and come back at 24 and then they got together, it would not be weird. You can't say it's weird because they, he knew her as a child because they're only six years apart. So, right. Am I doing the math correctly? 14 and 20. So like, that's when they met. So if like she went off to college and she came back at 25 and he was 31, that would be a perfectly decent relationship to have. The age gap makes sense. They knew each other as like, it doesn't matter. What's awkward about this particular situation, in my opinion, is that they knew each other when she was a minor and they didn't have a gap that they went straight from her being a minor to her being a legal adult to dating. That's the red flag. This, this text message from this TikToker is why I think they're kind of crazy because they're saying the fact that you knew her as a kid and then you dated her is the red flag. That's not the red flag. The red flag is not that quote, you knew her as a child while you were an adult. That's not the red flag. The red flag is there was no gap in them dating after she became an adult from being a child. Right? Like that's the red flag. It might. Okay. So let's keep going. Anything so vile is damaging to real victims. Motherfucker. Nobody is insinuating anything other than the evidence that you publicly posted being a fully pieced together five warning signs of grooming. At best, you have painted a perfect picture of what a groomer looks like, but you didn't do anything, but at best you have done that. So to then say that it would be damaging. Yeah, I could agree that it looks bad. I'm definitely going to say eyebrow raised, like red flag. I'm going to say red flag. Let's see if it truly is a red flag for sure. To real victims to even talk about this just because she doesn't feel victimized doesn't mean that she's not a victim. That comes with the emotional and psychological manipulation of a victim. And as she's hearing this right now, I'm sure she's like, no, no, no. And I'm sorry. I can't make that sound good to you because after going through all of this, I'm sure her feelings towards Zach are about like, you know, wanting to protect him. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, no, no I, it was fine. I wanted, I needed everything that I wanted. Everything. Yeah, but what you'll understand when your frontal lobe has fully developed as Zach's has years years ago, you just realized that you could do nothing wrong and he could seem really nice and he could think he's doing nothing wrong, but what he was doing was wrong. You should have had- No, grooming requires you to know what you're doing is wrong because you're doing it knowing you have to have a plan. You can't groom someone accidentally, guys. That's not how that works. So he just muted, he just made his whole point gone. Like he just literally- he just fucked up his whole video. As Zach's has years ago, you just realized that you could do nothing wrong and he could seem really nice and he could think he's doing nothing wrong, but what he was doing was- He could think he's doing nothing wrong, but what he did was wrong. Then it's not grooming. You just fucked up your whole argument. It's wrong. You should have had much clearer boundaries with the 14 year old girl that you I agree. It sounds like he wasn't grooming her. It sounds like they were highly inappropriate. So... Are you gonna take down this video? Cause you just proved it. You just proved yourself wrong in your own video, bro. You were living and you should- Like, what the fuck? Do not let that relationship develop into something that could be- Alice says, people know there's a difference between manslaughter and homicide, right? And the difference is between this, and the difference between this and grooming, it's intent. That's what I'm saying, guys. The difference between uh, consensual sex and grape is the content. They're, they're, that's why the nuance matters. So you gotta know what you're doing, my bro. He just literally, yeah, he just dismantled his whole argument. But I agree with him, it's wrong. I wish this video was not that Zach was a groomer, but that it was incredibly inappropriate and we have got to stop allowing the normalization of these types of relationships. I don't wanna live in a community where this is normal. I would like to live in a community where 24 year olds aren't dating 18 year olds. That regardless of them being 18, you give them a chance to have a fucking second to grow up. The 24 year olds are dating 21 year olds at most. Why are you dating somebody who can't even buy a beer? You know, like give a person a chance to grow up. I'm not saying you should be thrown in jail if you do it. I obviously think that's wrong. I know plenty of 18 year olds who want to have an older person experience. And I think they should have the legal right to do that. I just think there's a line, you know, in the sand. But also I think like we have to admit it. Like sometimes you're 50 and immature. Sometimes you are a stunted adult. Sometimes there's a lot of things. But obviously, if we want a better society, we need to move people in a direction that gets them healthy, into therapy, makes them, makes them understand the implications of things. Look, Tana says that having sex with Cody Ko didn't traumatize her, but I would argue that she had sex with Cody Ko because she's traumatized. I would say trauma leads us to engaging in intimate acts with people because we're trying to fulfill some 
some need that wasn't fulfilled in our childhood. Not always, but a lot of the time. Okay, not always, but a lot of the time. And so I do think Tana had sex with Cody because of her trauma. Even if that specific situation didn't traumatize her, I think if she was a healthy person, a healthy teenager, she would have told the 25-year-old to go kick fucking rocks the moment he hit on her. But the problem is, is like, Tana was extremely like in an abusive household growing up. Her parents basically abandoned her. Like Tana grew up in a horrible home and nobody was there to defend Tana. Nobody's there to stand up for Tana, not even Tana, but especially not the adults around her. That's the problem. The adults around you, they're not even standing up for kids. They're not even standing up for young adults. And that's the problem. It sounds like Zach just fell into a very normal situation. Normal does not mean healthy for new people in my audience. When I say normal, I mean common. I don't mean healthy. Normal does not mean good. Don't let people convince you that normal is good or natural. You ever hear conservatives say, is being gay even natural? As if being natural insinuates good. Lots of things are natural. Doesn't mean they're good. And normal does not mean good. It means common or expectation, like an expectation of behavior. Like this is the behavior I expected because that's what's normal. That's what's common. Okay. So I don't know what's happening with Zach, but something is happening. And if the mom and the parents around them are inviting them to be together, there's a lot of that that I think is a big part of the problem. I think parents are playing a much bigger role in these situations than we're willing to admit be categorized as are they siblings or dating which is what their relationship was largely online while she was a minor because remember that video i showed that was like the montage of her with zach ended in the hug this one remember this well in the comments somebody said i can't mantis says i don't think this is common is it a 24 and 18 year old depends on the bubble abba and preach made a really great video about this how an abba's bubble and preach's bubble super normal and my bubble super normal 15 year olds having boyfriends who are 22 super fucking normal um, Abba and Preach talked about this. Abba was 17 when he first had sex with a woman in her 20s. Super common, super normal. So again, it depends on the bubble. Maybe not in your bubble, but a lot of us have had this experience. A lot of us had girlfriends who had this experience. I know so many parents who absolutely normalize this. I know so many parents who are 15 and they married their 27-year-old boyfriend. I know so many people with these stories. Absolutely. fucking lutely and I don't think all those people are predators. I think a lot of those people are fucking stunted. And they're stunted because of the way humans have evolved and the way our cultures have evolved. We are, in my opinion, evolved animals. I don't think we're born with an innate sense of knowing what's right or wrong. I don't think we really know anything except to survive and we know what we observe. And if what you observe around you is that this is normal and common, you'll repeat patterns. You'll repeat that expectation of behavior because it's expected of you. If, if, if guys, if racism is an expectation of behavior, do you really think age gap relationships aren't? Do you know what I mean? Like if racism and lynching black people was an expectation of what was normal, why wouldn't age gap relationships be? It's so funny. We normalize war, destruction of children. We literally normalize homeless people. And you don't think normalizing an age gap relationship is a part of like the human condition? So again, this is all a part of the human condition and it's all a part of what is the expectation of behavior. So when you expect something different out of people, you also got to figure out why you even expect it in the first place. And I think that's where people are having the hardest time. Okay. What's the difference between this and Colleen Ballinger? Obviously it's completely different circumstances, but do her intentions absolve her? Yes. I, no, nothing is absolved. Okay. You can't be absolved. You're not absolved of the behavior. You There's still consequences for the consequences of things you didn't intend. Even if you didn't intend to hit somebody with your car and you do, there are consequences. It's just not the consequences that a murderer would face with the intention of killing somebody. So Colleen Ballinger isn't exempt from repercussions, but the expect the repercussions should be reasonable to the crime, right? And I think people went out of hand with Colleen Ballinger. I have a video about this. Like, how do you forgive somebody like Colleen? She's obviously severely stunted, Colleen Ballinger. She obviously is severely stunted. And so are all the parents that took their kids to see her show. Remember, and I've talked about this so much, that it's parents that are raising their children to think this behavior is normal and it's parents who are encouraging it. Remember that Drake would call these TikTokers phones and their parents would be like, oh my God, Drake's calling my daughter right now. Our life's about to change. 
Parents encourage their daughters to be with R. Kelly. Parents encourage their daughters to be with Drake. Parents are absolutely a part of this problem. And everyone thought my parents were crazy that we weren't allowed to date until we were 18. But do you understand why? My parents tried their best to not encourage us to date until we were 18. Obviously, we all secretly have boyfriends and girlfriends, you know. But in general, the idea was to keep their kids away from this possibility, was to remove that generational curse from their children's existence and try to keep their kids in a safe environment because they were predators, always interested in teenagers. And that's just reality. I had two teachers on campus who went to prison for engaging with, te- with students on campus. Two, two, two teachers on my high school campus and in public high school went to prison for engaging or had to go to prison in some aspect for engaging with children on campus. Okay, your predators are in your churches, they're in your families, and they're in your schools. They're everywhere. Now, there's a difference between a predator and an adult in a pressured situation, and also a child in a pressured situation, and also culture. There are so many cultures around the world where it's perfectly normal for this to happen. Normal, not healthy. So how do we break that generational curse? Well, first you gotta decide why it's wrong in the first place. And that's a lot harder. Conrad says 18 isn't really an adult though. I was just gonna say, 18 isn't some magical number. Like when you turn 18, you figured it all out, which is why even though 18 is the line in the sand we put down, which is good, we still need people to treat those adults with some sort of acknowledgement that they're not mature just because they're 18. Just because they're 18 doesn't mean they're fair game. And people think that is. People think, oh, well, you're 18, you're fair game. I would like to live in a world where just because you're 18 doesn't mean you're fair game. Tell if your siblings are dating. 3,800 likes. She said, not dating. Then someone says, thought they were sisters and brother, meaning that they were thinking that this video was evidence that they were dating. While she was a minor and he was 23 years old. Interesting. Okay, I've got more to show you, but let's get back into the DMs because she responded. They did sort of look like siblings. You know, they did sort of look like siblings. And they sort of did look like could be a couple, could not be a couple, but they also give sibling vibes. But also lots of people of sibling vibes growing up in a neighborhood do get married because they feel like family, so they feel safe. ...by saying, are you saying you didn't know her at 14 and 15 and 16? Because that's my point. That in of itself is the issue. The fact that I stated is that you dated a girl you knew as a child while you were an adult. Like this is all public information. Exactly. That's all anybody is saying. That is what is wrong. Yeah, but that's crazy. Why would you think that's wrong? I don't understand this argument. They can't be serious. See, put me back in the debate panels. You can't be serious that this alone is what's wrong. That makes no sense. That can't be what's wrong. And he said, those are all things I'm more than happy to talk about. Nothing even close to being strange or weird ever happened between us. I worked for her mom briefly. Oh, see, I worked for her mom briefly. Didn't then see her again until 2019 when she had a boyfriend. And the rest can be set on the cell because it's very dark. Oh, so they did have a gap. Okay, wait, that's better. So they did have a gap between them dating and not dating. Than you think. Indiana is happy to tell you herself as well. She hates this narrative because it makes her look like a victim when we both have helped people through real situations. It's totally undermining real victims. Like from the outside, sure, I can see how you think this, but I promise you in Indiana as well, I would never hurt or manipulate a soul. You can say any- Okay, wait, that changes things, right? That changes things. Mm, right? Because if there was a gap between when they knew each other to when they dated and she had a boyfriend in between, then he's definitely not a groomer. And there's definitely nothing that happened that was wrong then. Right? Am I crazy? Didn't he just prove his case again? Anything you want in English. That's what makes words special. But it doesn't make it the truth, Zach. Oh my God. I worked for her mom briefly and didn't see her again until, oh, didn't see her again. Okay, well, what about this? I oh. love this boy and I will always love him. Mm. And that is my idea of the perfect date. The title of the video. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, T, T, T. It doesn't make it the truth, Zach. Oh my God. I worked for her mom briefly and didn't see her again until, oh, didn't see her again. Okay, well, what about this? I love this boy and I will always love him. Mm. And that is my idea of the perfect date. The title of the video, who knows me better challenge? Who wins the romantic date question? Hey, Zach, if you are a 23 year old man and the 15 year old girl that you live with asks you to be in a video where she asks romantic questions to see who knows her best. Hey buddy, it's gonna be a little bit weird if you don't say no. And it's gonna be even more weird if you foster a close relationship with that girl that fully colors in the five warning signs of grooming. And then once she's legal, you date her. I'm having a hard time understanding where that's what? not grooming. Oh, because she wanted it and everything was fine.
fine and like the what? other stuff like everything's fine let's see how you fare on the what would be my perfect date that your 15 year old housemate asks you they're gonna try and come up with so she's 15 in this video is what he's saying okay wait wait red flag coming in so she is 15 in this video is what he's saying idea of what my perfect date would be. Listen to this. Oh, long before, I know. So you're sitting there. This fine gentleman looks at you from across the room. He gives you one of these. He's playing the piano. Ooh, where are you guys at? Ooh, the jazz bar? Who moves? And then he comes up to you and says, hey, sweetheart, you trying to get out of here? And you say, yes, darling. What am I doing? Hey, Zach, just want to pop in here real quick. Remind you, you're a 23-year-old man, one year younger than me right now, and the girl sitting next to you that you were describing the perfect date to, a 15-year-old girl who you- Okay, super weird. So why is this video happening? Where's her parent? Where's he? So obviously Zach doesn't have the discernment to think this is not a good idea. I agree. This is a bad idea. Okay. Oh, Harriet says, isn't, didn't he live in her house? Yeah, I guess this is when they lived in the house. Okay. But why is this fun? Like, why is this even happening? What bubble is this? that This is happening in the first place. Cause this is what I'm saying. Teenagers should not be on the internet. I'm going to say it again. Teenagers shouldn't be making content on the internet. Why are we doing this? Like, why are we putting kids in situations where they're making content? Who is letting this happen? Like, I just don't think like kids should be making these kinds of videos. I just feel like this is so, I sound like, fuck, this is so inappropriate. Okay. So like, we're, okay. I want him to make a video about the mom. That's what I mean. The reason I think it's kind of bullshit is you're going after the 23 year old. Where is the parent? Why aren't you putting the responsibility on the parent why are we putting all the responsibility on the youths not that the 23 year old isn't old enough to know better but where is the mother this wouldn't happen my parents wouldn't let this happen but my parents were very strict okay oh harriet says the parent kicked him out so did the mom know wait harry says he also edited her in videos with clips of inappropriate angles of her butt whilst she was a minor but i'm not sure what exactly happened i think Okay, so we don't know. Okay, we don't know. Yeah, this is this is so inappropriate as a video, but I, I put more responsibility on the parent, you know? Yeah, this is super weird. I don't like it. You have been hired to have a close working relationship with. And when she asked the question, what would be my perfect date? He said, oh, I'll go first, because I know. Okay. Oh, I'll go first. I know this one right away. And then going into a role play situation. For the record, my siblings would also probably be able to answer this question. And we are not romantically involved. I just feel like you're forgetting that people know things about you when they live with you. He's making it sound like, why would he know this? Well, for the same reason, your sibling would know it. You don't have to be related to share things with people you live with. Your roommates would also be able to probably answer the question, right? Like you're, you're, you're making it, it's like you've never lived with people. Have you ever had siblings or roommates? If you live with people, they're going to know. And you might say like, why would they know that about you? Because they live with you. So they hear you talk and you talk to them. Where you're being like, hello, sweetheart. Ah! I was her mom and I saw this video, I would fire Zach into the sun. He wouldn't be out of- Yeah, so why didn't the mom do it? Right? Job. He'd be out of breath. What the fuck do you mean I'm giving you a room in my apartment so that you can edit videos of my 15-year-old daughter Cringe. and you are a 23-year-old man saying, oh, no, no, let me describe your perfect date. Yeah, yeah, Basically, there's a guy at a piano. He goes, hey, what's up, sweetheart? Wop, 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 wop. Being in a bar. You, it's a jazz lounge. It's, it's a jazz kid's It's a kid's yeah. jazz lounge. Stay with me here. Okay. Yeah. You're enjoying yourself. He says, once you get in my, my wagon, that's what he calls his car. He's a cool guy. Yeah, it's a wagon. You get in his wagon. Alice says it's his responsibility to draw the line in the sand and be like, no, can I be honest with you? I think we're asking too much of people. We are. This, you, you guys have to understand, like if they're living in a household that feels like siblings, if they're living in a household that feels like friends living together, age becomes incredibly blurred because if you think nothing's happening, like if there's actually nothing happening, right? So like, I just think like, I don't think this is as black and white, but I think this is so inappropriate because of the way that culture forms. Like, I would love to see us get adults and kids not to be friends, but this is why I say adults and fr adults and kids can't be friends. Because look, this is what happens when adults and kids become friends. They start to think of each other as equals and you're not. Friends means peers. It means you're equal in some capacity. 
which means you should be allowed to do the same things though your friends are doing. And that's why I don't think adults and kids can be friends because look how inappropriate it becomes. They, he, you, if you're friends with somebody, you should be able to kiss them. And it feels like this should, they should be kissing. Do you know what I'm saying? This is the part that I think is confusing for everybody. Like you can't be friends with kids because you can't treat them like an equal. And this is why you can be friendly. You can be appropriate. You can't do this because this is what happens. You start to think we're the same. Oh, he's 23, but I'm 15. We're like the same. No, you're not the same. They are convinced they're on the same level. He's probably immature to be on the level of a 15 year old. And she's probably in her head mature enough when she's not. I'm sorry. Like you are talking about human biology, biological humans who are animals. You're talking about evolved animals on a planet that has been alive for so long. We know for a fact that humans have a huge problem with discipline. And we think that this is a good fucking idea. No. Wagon. Unfortunately, his mom's driving because you're both underage. They are both underage. Hey, Zach, please remember that. They are both underage. They are both underage. They are both underage. Maybe if you spent a little bit more time reminding yourself that she was underage, you wouldn't have dated her as soon as she was. Not if he didn't think about it as bad. Literally, I told you guys this story before. When I'm a millennial and I was friends with a bunch of millennials and I took my 17 year old sister to come hang out with us. One, my mom didn't think it was weird. My dad didn't think it was weird. And I didn't think it was weird. None of us thought it was weird that my 17 year old sister was coming to hang out with a bunch of adults who were drinking for the weekend. Why didn't we think that was weird? None of us were predators. Well, maybe one person was, and we didn't think about it. None of us even thought about it. Cause we thought, Hey, well, like half of us are gay. We'll protect her. Half of us are straight. It's fine. Half of us are Christian. It's fine. We'll protect, not a big deal. Then the one guy in the group, who's actually a high school teacher, ironically enough, started hitting on her. And even at the time we're like, you're being kind of weird, but we didn't think about it that much. And now in hindsight, we're like, oh my God. So everything that feels obvious to us now, remember it was not obvious to us then because nobody thought they were friends with a predator. And nobody thinks it's weird because in a lot of places around the world, it wouldn't be because you're not being weird about it. And that's the problem. Why didn't I think it was fucking weird until I did? Oh, because I didn't know better. And then you realize like, I can't believe I put my sister in that situation. And now looking back, we're like, we would never do that now in the same way, right? Jerry Seinfeld dating a high schooler when he was in his thirties, nobody, nobody said anything about it, but now we'd be like, why are you doing that? because humans learn over time. The question is in this bubble with this family, why aren't they doing anything? Why haven't they learned the lesson? So assuming people are groomers is I think a mistake when people are probably just like not, they don't know. And the reason they don't know is because we don't know how to hold people accountable in these situations without labeling them groomer, right? We don't even give them an opportunity to be honest about what they were thinking because we just want to punish, 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 punish. I would love to protect children, but I would love to know why adults are even in these situations in the first place. And it's certainly not unique to this generation because all of human history has bullshit like this. And it is bullshit. I don't want to defend it. I want to understand why so we can avoid it in the future. We need ways to tell people don't engage in this behavior in a way that makes sense. I guarantee you, if anyone tried to stop Tana from having sex with Cody, she wouldn't have stopped. And she would have been upset we tried to stop her. And at the same time, somebody should, should have stopped her. Or at least tried to. But what are you going to do? Hold down Tana so she can't do it? You're going to call the cops on them? Because at the end of the day, you're just calling cops on a bunch of stupid adults and a kid in a situation that is so much more common than you're willing to acknowledge because you're not wanting to, you don't want to break the generational curse. You just want people to be punished. We have got to break this generational curse. So we've got to know why it happens in the first place. It is so easy to sit on a moral high ground and be like, I'm good. I've never done this. Good, bro. Cool. But what have you done? Go ahead. Name something you've done. I took my sister to a party when she was 17. That was pretty fucking reckless of me. And I'm ashamed of it. But also, what are you going to do? I learned from it and I got better, but I just didn't think about it. Would I do that now? No, I'm not bringing some minor to hang out with a bunch of drinking adults. But let me tell you, so many of the house parties I went to in my 20s, there were 15 year olds there with 30 year olds. And it was incredibly normalized. Everyone tried to stay away from each other 
But the question is, why was a bunch of 30-year-olds partying with 15-year-olds? I was about 21 at the time. And we'd ask ourselves, why are we all hanging out together? To be honest with you, because everybody was a loser. Everybody at those house parties were losers, trying to live the American pie life, trying to be cool, trying to be like, I'm cool. I go to parties on the weekends. You're all losers. And that's why we're all hanging out together because we're all a bunch of losers. Okay. And I don't know if people know this. Losers can do a lot of harm on the world because your self-esteem is low. You're not thinking about other people's feelings. And then you're in a situation where you're taking advantage of people, whether you intend to or not. You put yourself in them in bad situations because you're a loser. Okay. So intention matters here in terms of how we move forward. But the harm is also done. I don't want to speak for this girl. If she doesn't feel traumatized over it and she doesn't feel groomed, I'm not going to say she was groomed. That's fucked up. And I don't know what Zach's intentions were, but I'll tell you this. I'm looking at that mother. I'm looking at that mother. Okay. Is legal and it wasn't weird for you to do that it wasn't weird in your eyes i don't know man if this is how you want to conduct yourself as a human being i guess that's what you did but there's five signs and you're filling them out in this video but let's go back to the comments real quick because he said here he didn't see her again until 2019 when she had a boyfriend and the rest can be said on the call because it's very dark darker than you think and then what she said mean? she hates this narrative because it makes her look like a victim when we both have helped people what does darker than you think means through real situations it's totally undermining real victims what he seems to be implying is that she was going through some very dark trauma that he helped her with at that time and that's why they had this close relationship he goes on to say i don't want all of this blasted on the internet it's a serious situation and he only wants to talk about this situation on a call because he doesn't want texts of this traumatic situation involving indiana and he clearly views himself as a savior here saying we both have helped people through real situations and i'm sure indiana would back him up on that and say that he helped her but what i would say is that when a young girl who you have known since she was 14 and is currently 16 years old. If she is going through a relationship problem and you're 24 years old, I don't think the move is to get real close to her and help her through it. And True. then when she's legal, date her. But hey. True. The move would not be to help her. It's inappropriate. The move would get her mother to help her or a therapist to help her. Right? I agree. I don't think if I'm a 24 year old and I've got a teenager coming to me with problems and look in the past, I've definitely tried to help out people. And I've learned that when you're dealing with a minor, it's just better to go to the cops. Even recently, who was that kid? I did a story on her parents, her parents, his parents, their parents. I forgot what their pronouns are. I think it's their parents, his parents, their parents. I don't remember now. I did, um, I did a video on a minor and they came into my comment section and they were like, Brittany, can you help me? No, you can call the cops. You can go to resources. I'm not helping minors out like that anymore because when I was in my early twenties, yeah, of course I knew a bunch of teenagers and they'd be like, Brittany, help me with this. And it's not a big deal. By the way, I'm an older sister. Of course people would come to me. Everyone knows me. I'm in a small community where everyone goes to me for help, even on the internet. Of course, like I get it, but also just for your safety and mine, because honestly, no offense, I'm I'm going to mean this in the nicest way possible. I'm not facing the legal system to help anybody. OK, you better be inner circle for me to work that hard for you, girl, because the legal system is crazy. So frankly, in my opinion, if a teenager is reaching out to you for help, you need to get them the right resources. And it's probably not the 24 year old boy living in the house. OK, OK. Chrissy says it's giving Drake and Millie Brown vibes. Literally gross. Gross. Okay. I just think men who want to be friends with young people in vulnerable situations or women, adults, I should say adults, regardless of gender, adults that want to be friends with vulnerable young people are always going to raise a red flag to me. But there are genuine adult people who want to help you in appropriate ways and you should seek out that help. There are adults, teachers, pastors, mentors, therapists who want to help you. They want to help you and they are the right resources. Okay. But this like Captain Savaho attitude is inappropriate. So I agree. Zach is super inappropriate and I would not trust him around teenage girls. And I think he shouldn't trust himself around them either. Period. Not because he is a predator because I can't prove that, but because it's just inappropriate. It's just inappropriate. You don't need to be friends with teenage girls, period. Okay, thank you, camp counselors, all those people. You're not friends with your little campies. 
Don't make friends with minors. Okay, thank you. That's me. Anyways, in the DMs, she says, yes, because it doesn't look good for you, does it? But it happened. He said, I know you just wanted views. She said, like you said, you're happy to talk about the situation, then do it. And then he pulls out a very cool, very masculine, very manly. If you cared, you'd talk to me and call me. If you actually cared so much, you'd fucking like call me. All these people are so emotionally stunted. Look, adult people who understand adult maturity levels, they hire lawyers and they fucking get your shit taken off the internet. Zach is immature, you're immature, everybody in this situation is so silly, okay? Alice says, Brittany, is this proving the narrative about how men mature slowly and differently than women? I hate this narrative. Women, sometimes, this is a huge generalization I'm about to make. In some cultures, some men and some women are, it's not really gendered. Men do not mature faster or slower than women. It's all cultural. Men are given responsibilities at a different level than women. And sometimes women are given more responsibilities in cultures, thus parentifying them into a situation that appears to be maturity levels, but has nothing to do with that. So many people I know will be like, this girl is so mature for her age. She was parentified as a teenager and had to take care of her siblings because her parents were drug addicts. And like, isn't this amazing how she's like done all these amazing, no, that's sad. You just told me a depressing story. I am depressed now. You just told me a child had to be parentified and take care of their siblings. And you think that's maturity? That's not maturing. That's parentification. You are not mature for your age. You are traumatized. Okay. You are not mature for your age. You are traumatized. You have had the burdens of your family's generational curses on your shoulders. And because as a woman, you are taking on the burdens of your immature and re reductive family. Okay. Now you are seen as mature when you've never even had the chance to be a kid in the first place. So you've never even had the chance to grow up. Okay. Women or men also can have this if they're the older, the older son or they have responsibilities in the family or if they're the son and the father leaves the family, they might have to quote mature faster to sort of take care of the family, but they're not maturing faster. Okay. Conrad says men do mature more slowly. Mm. Conrad says men have a slower rate of brain development, not in this not with this age gap, right? Like not with this age gap. And trauma does not accelerate maturity. Alex says trauma will accelerate maturity, not maturity in the way that we think about it, okay? Not maturity in the way that we think about it. Not maturity in the sense that you're healthy and functional and reasonable and can make healthy decisions. There's, there's an association that maturity equal healthy. And we gotta make sure that we're not associating those two things together. Okay. I was told my whole life, you're so mature for your age. At the moment I voted progressive, they're like, you used to be so mature. You were more mature when you were 10 years old. Nobody knows what mature means. Mature to people just means you're doing the things that I'm amazed you're doing at your age. So I don't think men and women are maturing at very fast rates in order to really see it in the way that we're seeing it in these age gap relationships. A 50 year old should be mature enough not to date a 19 year old. So it's not like, oh, he's maturing so slowly. He's only 50. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. This whole men mature slower than women. Okay, you're 50, get it together, let's go. So again, when we have these conversations, I'm open to the nuances of like people mature and bio biology plays a role and like brain development and neurodivergency over not neurodivergence, all of that. The burden of being labeled mature for your age is the responsibility that should never have been on your shoulders to begin with because you're still a child. The burden adults put on children to be mature for their age is an, is an absolute trauma response of thinking that a child who hasn't even had the chance to grow could ever encompass the maturity levels and expectations of an older person who should have reached those milestones. Reaching milestones is a lost art. We talked about this yesterday where when you're an online content creator, there is a part of us that stays pretty young because we're not maturing at the same rates as some of our other peers that did other more adult things. And yet we're still paying our bills and doing all those things. But the level of responsibility, the things that we're capable of doing are probably a little bit more stunted than the other people who went a, a different path. So everyone's gonna have a different relationship with these things, in my opinion. Conrad, you're totally fine, don't apologize. You said, I thought we were talking about 26, not 19 and 50. Of course, of course, under 26. Yeah, I mean to say, because I know people who have this, I understand guys, I want, I want to be nuanced. I wanna make sure that people aren't being punished for things they didn't do. I want to make sure that I want to make sure a lot of things are happening within reason, 
But I also, that means we have to dissect every situation. I got to know every detail. I got to know who's saying what. There's so much bias and prejudice in the world. It takes a lot of effort to really know what's happening in a situation. And at the same time, if you have a strong opinion, that's fine. Just state that it's an opinion. Just say, I have a very strong opinion. This is my opinion. This is the evidence I'm using. I could be wrong, but this is my strong opinion. Like I did with Lachlan. I went really hard on Lachlan and I stand by everything I said in those videos. I could still be wrong and I'm happy to retract that in the future if I am. But I feel in my opinion that I'm correct about a mythical person named Lachlan who I don't know who that is in real life. Okay. So again, I'm open to the nuance. I'm open to rehabilitation. I believe and restorative justice. I believe in so many amazing things that will help the world get better. But first, the people that are in the wrong have to even know why they're in the wrong in the first place. And because I don't believe in objective morality, the wrong is also a construct. Right and wrong are constructs of morals dictated usually through culture or deep contemplation. And so Brittany, I know why I have my right or wrongs, but does anybody else? Or who's the thing they're going to, to tell them if it's right or wrong? Like this guy we're watching right now, who tells him what's right or wrong? Who gave this person the skill set to know? I don't know. I don't mean to misgender them. They might be a, a they, but the whole point is like this person, I don't know where they get their morals from. How do they know this is right or wrong? Why are they calling him a groomer? What definition of groomer are they using? They try to start off the video saying, look, I have all this evidence. Look, I give you the definition of a groomer. But then throughout this video, literally like ruin their whole argument by arguing the intent. She said, LMAO, that video barely has any views. That's true, Zach. After all this, it still has like 7,000 likes. That's not a big video. I only found out about it because you did this. You're the master of your own demise, Zach. Not just because of your actions then, because your dumbass actions now. He says, Indiana doesn't want what happened to her on text for people to see. Hey, fair enough. But then why are you using it to defend your actions? It seems like you're saying, yeah, okay, I did completely do everything that is signs of grooming somebody and then once they became legal i dated them so by definition the grooming like getting somebody ready to be in a relationship with them technically if you're viewing it that way i guess i did do that. i'm not saying you did that intentionally but i am saying you didn't stop yourself from doing that as evidenced by doing it and then dating her. yeah he did it again you didn't stop yourself by doing it even if you didn't intend to do it which means it's not grooming but it is inappropriate and i think really gross i wish this video wasn't he groomed her. I wish this video was, this is super gross and I don't like it. Mimi says this guy is just trying to make money and that's about it. Yeah, maybe this dude is just trying to make money. But obviously, I mean, I guess we all are in the game of streaming. Guys like the stream. I just, yeah, I wish he came out with a video that didn't say grooming. Because it really, guys, I hope you know this. If you use the word wrong so many times, people will hear that word and numb it out. So now we're going to need a new word for grooming. What's going to be the new word? You already ruined PDF file and you've ruined grooming. Now nobody's going to take those words seriously because you can't. It's just like with Nazi or what was the other one everybody used? You can't use it all the time without it losing its meaning because you're you, people are going to hear it. You're like the boy who cried wolf. If you use a word wrong enough, people will say, oh, but when they say it, they don't mean anything serious. So what's going to be the new word to indicate we're very serious? Her. What's not getting through your coconut head brain? You big headed dumbass. By the way, this is why Tara Yummy left dropouts. I'm just going to say, you think it's a oh. coincidence that all this stuff starts coming to light and then Tara Yummy pops out and says, I'm leaving dropouts just on to different things. A little bit too busy. Anyways, later in the DM. Okay, well that you're okay. Do you have proof of that? Or are you just making shit up now? Did he just make another shit up? Man, this guy makes a lot of shit up. He has a million subscribers. He has a million. See, I should just do this. I should grift. I should just do this for a living. How does he have a million subscribers if this is his content? Even if everything he's saying is true, he's not actually offering the right amount of evidence. That's crazy. He says, nope, not true. You framed me to be a... That's the grossest thing anyone can be. No, Zach. Actually, nobody's framing you to be a What we're doing is taking the video evidence and screenshots and saying, look, look, look. And See? And like grooming means nothing. It means nothing. Nothing you showed indicates either of those things. She wasn't even of age to be, for it to be like, what are you doing with your life? Then the How do you sleep at night? How do people sleep at night? Like if you say feely or grapey, that's fine. But like you're literally saying, 
how do you sleep at night, bro? That's not even, I'm so nerd. I, maybe it's my neurodivergency. Like I'm too, like, you have to be a little bit more accurate than this, I guess. I don't know. It's fine. Whatever. ...of grooming and all of the warning signs of it and saying, look, look, look. And these two Venn diagrams, you know, where they have the middle part that intersects. And these two circles of information, by the way, when you put them together, is actually just a circle. All of the warning signs of grooming is just in the evidence. There is no speculation on, did he actually do the things that are the warning signs of being a groomer? No, you could just go one, two, three. Four. That's why we live in a culture. Because it is normal. It is very normal to do these things. That's why people keep doing it. That's why it keeps coming out. Because it is normalized. And we have to have that conversation. It is absolutely, it's normalized in movies. It's normalized in media. It's normalized in music. Oh, just wait for not this week, but next week's video, Monday video. Oh yeah, it's all normalized. It is literally everywhere. It's in your top selling music albums. It's in your mom and dad's story about how they met. It's in your grandma and grandpa's story about how they met. Oh yeah. It is normal. It's very common. And so we have to talk about why it's common. Why is it so prevalent in culture? Because human beings aren't being honest about how fucked up everyone's families are. And everybody is like acting like it's it's not. Listen, I don't think you're all predators, but I think all y'all got to recontextualize how your romantic stories were actually very creepy and very inappropriate, in my opinion. I just think we're not ready to have those conversations because they're sad. It's really sad when you think about it, all of human civilization was built off rape and genocide. All of human civilization was built off of conquering people and genociding the fuck out of people. Love marriages, consensual marriages are a fucking phenomenon, bro. Yes, they've been around forever, but the majority and the prevalency of them, we're still arguing if we should be allowed to have love marriages now. That's still a conversation we're having. Again, I wanna stop predators too, but it sounds like you just wanna name everybody a predator. Everyone can't be a predator and we can still live in a rape culture because a lot of these people literally think it's what they're supposed to do because we've trained people to do bad things. We have trained people to think it is reasonable and rational rational to brag about genociding a whole culture because they deserved it. It is considered perfectly healthy and reasonable to praise genocide because you're winning a war. So, okay, don't talk to me about normal when normal be crazy out here, okay? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Video link, video link, video link, screenshot, screenshot. And you yourself know it because when somebody brought it up earlier, you said, uh, that feels weird. Hey, you know why it feels weird? Because it is! Like, obviously, how do you not know that? I'm telling you, he's just stupid. He's too stupid. Oh, I agree, he is stupid. Yeah, I agree with you, he's too stupid. Yeah. So is the mom for bringing her into the house. So is everybody involved. To actually know what he's done. But that's- yeah. Oh, wait, oh, oh. It's not an excuse. Oh, he but it is proving that he's not a groomer. Ding, 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 ding. This guy is constantly proving himself wrong. I love this. I love- Now this is a content creator right here, baby. <laughs> this is... <laughs> you just said it. He's stupid. He doesn't even know. He has no discernment. He has no wisdom. I agree with you. He later says, why do you thrive on bringing people down? This is crazy. These text messages are insane. This guy has the maturity level of a 12 year old sending these text messages. You don't know what actually happened. If you cared, why not reach out to me or Indiana? If you even cared. Uh, I honestly don't. But to be honest, this guy is not helping. This guy with his hair calling everybody a groomer. You're not helping, bro. You're not helping anyone. You're just not helping anyone. You're just helping people be more angry and more into punishment. And like, you're just not helping the way you think you are, you know? Don't thrive on bringing people down. It's not fun. I can do all sorts of things that aren't bringing people down. But one thing that I do like to do is bring somebody down who's not taking accountability for a heinous act. And Ugh. Okay, first of all, don't ASMR in my ear ever again. But also, what was the heinous act? That is spelled H-E-I-N-O-U-S. Heinous. But he has a... But what was that heinous act? See, he's confusing me. He's doing the thing again. Good point. Later in the DMs, he says, How am I not addressing anything? Indiana and I never had a romantic relationship or really much of a friendship until she was 18. What my perfect date would be? Oh, I'll go first because I know. A romantic date where somebody's looking at you across the bar. He's playing the piano. He says, what's up, sweetheart? Oh, you you weren't close. Oh, we got a little relationship timeline here. Here's her. Uh, 
Ugh, he's exhausting me. I feel like he's not giving the evidence, but okay, I'm still holding out. Once again, I would like to say I am here to stop predators, but I don't want to go after innocent people and I don't want to go after dumb people because I do think dumbness is honestly, it's a, it's bad. Dumb is like criminal almost, but it's not. To be dumb is to contribute so much more to society than, than that, that is so much more harm than we can even fathom. Like I wish... Like I have to have very serious talks with so many people about like, you are so dumb, you are hurting people. That is a very hard conversation for someone to hear who has money, who has a job, who's managing. Have you ever had to tell somebody who's relatively functional that, hey, you're so dumb, you're hurting people right now. So you're either very dumb or a predator. Which one would you like to be? It is hard to admit. It's almost better to be a predator because at least I'm not dumb. Dumb is very hard for people's ego. That's why we romanticize villains. That's why villains are so smart and sexy. You know, Homelander from The Boys had to, the actor had to come out and say, hey, just a reminder that he's the bad guy, guys, because people were romanticizing this character as the good guy because people identify with a smart character and villains are written as smart people. That's why people romanticize the villainy because it takes a level of smartness. It's also why people like Trump because they think he was smart enough to get where he was well, everyone can see he's just a lucky fucking idiot who was smart enough to make enough networking decisions to get where he is. And that's different. Bernie with the $50 super chat, let's go, says, watch who you put on a pedestal. You may be putting a file into the position they need to be in. Exactly. I agree with you. That's why you shouldn't pedestal anyone. Nobody should be pedestaled. Nobody should be pedestaled. Everybody is the same. No one is better than anybody else in that sense. To pedestal a person is to deny humanity. You must not pedestal a single soul. No one should be pedestaled. Period. Her at 15, him at 22. On the red carpet, hand firmly on her body. Oh, her 16. Hold on. 15, him at 20. Okay, so he's saying this is a very inappropriate picture. I mean, in religious bubbles, she's dressed very inappropriately for a 15 year old, right? So in some bubbles, she shouldn't even be dressed this way. She's 15. In other bubbles, what world is this inappropriate? What do you mean? Two on the red carpet, hand firmly on her body. Oh, her. Why? How? In what bubble is that her inappropriate? 15, him. Her clothing in some religious bubbles. But what? How are they? What is this? How is this inappropriate? Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah. Membership for 14 months. Let's go. Says I'm poor, but I want attention. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know you're my favorite. You're my out of. You're my. You're my favorite. No one's ever been more of my favorite than Yaya. Yaya, she's my favorite. <laughs> That's my Trump. That's my Trump impersonation. Okay, guys, is this inappropriate? Like, it is inappropriate if they're dating, and it is inappropriate if they're sexual. But is this inappropriate? Like, what? They're just taking a picture together. At 22, on the red carpet, hand firmly on her body. Oh, her 16th birthday. Okay, oh, let's see. Oh, there he is right there filming. Oh, and as you can see from this screenshot, he says that he was hired to film the party. Not even joking. Talking about her 16th birthday that we just saw. So he was okay. close with her at 14, 15, 16, 17, as evidenced by the evidence. But then he says, Indiana and I never had a romantic relationship or really much of a friendship until she was 18. Of course you say that. I mean, well, I agree with him. That there definitely was probably there there's probably something more going on than not going on but i don't think he's offering like evidence yet <sighs> that's the problem is like he could maybe his intuition is right maybe something definitely was happening i could see that but you're not giving the right evidence when in time says no pedestal for a partner especially for a partner oh my god do not pedestal your partner oh my god guys pedestals are for strippers who are above you and you're throwing dollar bills their way. Do not pedestal anybody, especially a partner. Pedestaling means to put them above you. Like they're better than you. Like they're more important than you. Don't do that. Or five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Every time Zach Justice heard one of those numbers, he was like, oh my God, that's the exact type of age demographic that I'm interested. In. She responded by saying, and this is okay to you? You knew her from the age of 14. And he responded by saying, you paint it like I was waiting, lurking for her to become 18. That's disgusting and didn't happen. Hey brother, we're not painting it that way. You are the one who's saying that. And by the way, you're filling in the gaps between the dots. The dots are very clearly there. And these dots seem 
seem to only be put together in a way of, oh, seems like this guy was interested in her because he ended up dating her once she was legal. And yet he knew her and was very close to her when she was underage. So do we feel like those feelings spontaneously popped up when the clock struck midnight and she hit 18? No. I'm not saying you were waiting and lurking, but I am saying that once she hit 18, your mind probably went, well, it's not illegal now. Judging by the fact that once it was not illegal now, you did pursue a relationship with her. You stone-headed, brain dead. I'm not gonna go any further, but you're a p I'm not gonna- She said, never said anything like that. He said, you insinuated. Dots are there. It's very easy to fill in the gaps. Seems like you can do it yourself, Zach. Very great. It's very exciting to see your brain progressing to a point where you can do problem solving a little bit. Now I'm curious, how are you gonna solve the problem of everybody knowing about what you did? It's people who are this dumb who literally make me bust out my watch mojo voice. He goes on and says, do you not see how you are leading people to believe something so gross and completely undermining real victims? You were just saying that because- Daya Water says, I wish a more responsible person made this video. Yeah, he's very like, he's just very like silly about the way he's going about it. I mean, if he has good intentions, great, but it's hard to imagine this person has like good intentions so much as like cloud intention. I don't even know what he's doing. I don't even like that Zach guy, but damn, like you gotta, you gotta have more, but okay, let's finish it. Maybe there's something in the last like fucking five minutes that's gonna blow our brains because you do not think that she is a real victim. That does not mean that she's not a real victim. You think she isn't, she says she isn't. But guess what, Salvador Perez? That doesn't mean what you did wasn't wrong. Okay, if okay. If you fucking read the fifth warning sign of grooming, you would understand that you are completely exemplifying it right now. No, babe, it's normal. No, babe, babe, it's totally normal. Every guy who's 24 wants to date the girl that he babysat. <laughs> <laughs> no! She goes on to say, I'm undermining victims by telling exactly what happened. And she said, and please don't talk about undermining victims when you make pedo jokes all the time. Thank you! He said, again. Uh, making a joke doesn't undermine victims. Everybody relax. Context matters, okay? Jokes. You're being serious. Undermining real victims. Making jokes about the situation? Listen, I'm not gonna say you can't make dark jokes, but when you're making dark jokes about this, and then you have the history that you have, Zach. God. Well, he doesn't have a history of pedophilia. You prove that in your own video. This is why words matter. Guys, we need a new word for pedophilia. If pedophilia is not gonna mean pedophilia, what's the new word? Okay, it's gotta mean something. Words have to mean something. Just if we're communicating, if we're not communicating, we don't even need words. Just like make this face like I do, like a judgy face. I don't like it. Gotta admit it looks a little fucking weird, man. You gotta admit it. No, you know, like if you were seeing anybody else doing this, you would go, ew, stinky, which is what Tara Yummy did. By the way, real quick, let's throw in a fun little exchange between Zach and Indiana. No, I told you you look like a model with your tiny f I love her milkers. Zach. Okay, where, right. where, do I, where do I land on this then? Do I say I like your teeth or I don't like your teeth? Just because we can paint your chest and play a pretty level game of chess on it. <laughs> hey, Zach, that's so funny, man. Hey, do you remember the time when you were 20 years old living with her and she was 14? <laughs> do you remember that? Hey, do you remember how the majority of your relationship has been while she was underage and you were much older than her? In your 20s the entire time. Wow, do you remember that? And right now you're talking about how her- Yeah, that's crazy, bro. It's super crazy. Tiny chest turns you on. How you're attracted to how it looks like under the low. I mean, he's full on accusing him of being a pedophile. Like, maybe, I don't know. I mean, liking girls with flat chests, I'm not sure is public, but it could be. R.A.P. to girls with small titties, I guess. Like, in a way that doesn't really sound so great. <laughs> so I guess your joking tone when you're saying that is actually really creepy and you should maybe rethink how you talk and act. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it's cool. Yeah, on her birthday, just going out with her on her 18th birthday, clearly you weren't close. Okay, you can lie, I guess. Anyways, he- Yeah, they obviously were hanging out a lot. I think like, I don't know if they were friends, but they were obviously hanging out a lot. He ended this DM exchange by saying, The point is, I don't know why you try to find the negative in but I hope whatever is going on in your personal life, you heal from and become happy with yourself. And that's not me being me. I genuinely mean that. Oh, Zach. Oh my God. You're a really good manipulative boyfriend, I bet. Wow. That is really, really embarrassing for that to be publicly just out there. The point is, I don't know why you try to find the negative in life. Hey, pal, the negative in life is screenshots and video evidence of your ex-girlfriend and you when you were in your 20s and she was a young teenager. Early 20s and early teens. Very different ballgame, my friend. For now, sure. Zach, because you want to come at my sister Zena for what she said, I had- Don't. 
on behalf of the black community, don't refer to this black woman as your sister. Okay. I don't like it from you. I don't like it from you. I had to do a little bit of further digging because I felt like there was probably more out there that she didn't have time to discuss. And I've already been showing a lot oh. of that throughout this video. But now I want to take some time to look at a few more clips. Okay, no? this better be it. This better be it, baby. Let's go. I'm rooting for you, Blondie. Let's go, baby. Show me it. Remember Zach was hired to be her editor, so he edited this. Okay. Maybe he shot it. I don't know. He was all- Uh-oh. Okay. So living there, I think the chances are high that he shot it. I'm not going to say that, but he did edit it. I like you. And at first you're thinking, okay, so she's just at a go-kart track. How okay, old is she? 15? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, then she goes over here and we're going to have to blur the screen because she's 15 years old. And okay. I will just describe what is happening on screen. So that is Indiana and the video zooms in on her bottom. The okay. copyrighted music playing. I'll go for just a second so you can hear. Okay, it's like... We could watch Britney Spears music videos right now. I feel like we're being, I don't know how to feel about this. It's not great, but like you could just go watch Britney Spears music videos right now. And she's like 15. So I feel like this blur is not helping your case. Cause now I don't know what's happening. The is, song she, is, is she shaking her butt? And so he's filming it. Yeah. Well, okay. Are we, so 15 year olds shouldn't shake their butts. Do we agree? 15 year olds shouldn't be on the internet. 15 year olds shouldn't shake their butts. Be on TikTok. 50 year old, 50, we agree, yeah? 15 year olds shouldn't dance on the internet because of men. Is that what we're all agreeing to? Is that what we agree to? I feel like teenagers would be able to dance around a group of women who aren't predators, but okay. So are we saying, this is what we're saying, right? That's his conclusion. That girls, because like, shouldn't be dancing. I mean, I, my very religious mother would agree with you. I mean, I might even agree with you. I don't know if I want teenagers on the internet doing any kind of sexy dances. I don't even know if I want them on the internet talking, if I'm going to be honest. Maybe they shouldn't be even caught. In I don't know. Are we I got a big booty, I got a big booty, which was the decision of a 21 year old man while editing a video of a 15 year old girl. By the way, the video didn't seem like there was anything really wrong with it until you add in the context of the song, I got a big booty, a big, big booty. And then the shot placement seems to be a little bit more, I don't know, fucking gross. How about another video, Zach? In this one, the girls are 15. And again, Zach is 21. Cool. Great. Um, we're moot banging. We're gonna bang that moot bang today. Yeah, this is a dynamic that I do think is super inappropriate. And I see it very frequently. And I think this is why you should have parents that are involved in your life. Why aren't the parents involved? Zach is as responsible. Well, I think the parents are more responsible because they're in charge of their minor's protection, right? Okay, I agree. Like, hello? And Zach is responsible for not making better decisions. Absolutely. But like, don't you think it's interesting that parents are like, this is so cute. Look how cute this video is. Like, this is a cultural problem. Like, even at 21, 22, 23, he's going to be looking to the parents to okay or not okay him. Like, I don't know if we know that. Like, obviously, if the mom says, it's okay, Zach, I think this is so cute, keep doing it. He's going to get the okay go from the elder in the community. Like, elders and communities also, because 21 is still a child, like, you're still so young, right? Yes, 21 is much older than 15, but in hindsight, 21 is much younger than 35 in 50, okay? And in some ways, 21 is still a kid. The parent should have come in and said, hey, I don't want this grown guy or this 21-year-old kid involved with my 15-year-old kid because this is different, right? Why isn't that happening? Because I agree with you. Definitely some shenanigans were happening between the two of them before she turned 18, or maybe not. I really don't want to put that on them if it's not true. I feel bad because it's it's a very it's a big deal to say that. We're gonna make okay, that ready? hard and deep. Should we try, guys? Really want, quick. I won't include that part. Yeah, that's like I hate to say this. Like, okay, okay. This is what I'm trying to say. When y'all are like, I'm friends with my 15 year old brother. Your brothers and you are making these jokes. Siblings are making these jokes, not with each other, but you know, like, oh, uh, anime character hard and deep. Like, sex jokes are very prevalent in some families. Like, not with each other, but like, you know, if you're watching a show and you're like, ha, ha, uh, it's like funny, but the reason it's different is because you grew up together. So you're all in the same house. It's not a big deal. 
But when, or if you grew up in a neighborhood with a bunch of cousins or friends and you're all making sex jokes, it's not that weird. What's weird is that they didn't grow up together, but now they kind of did grow up together because she's known him through her teen years. And now I'm confused about the dynamics. I'm just confused. Okay, I hate this video. I hate everything. There's not enough information, but also there, where's the adult? Where's the actual adult person in this situation? Because it's not Zach. Where's the actual adult in this situation? <laughs> We're gonna mug bang hard and deep. Hey, 15 year old girls, you think that was cool when I said that really sexual comment? Oh, wait a minute. That reminds me of rain and one of the warning signs of grooming. Desensitization to touch and- No, no, no. No. Discussion of sexual topics. No, totally different, totally different vibes, bro. The groomer has different vibes. This is totally different. Oh, oh, yeah. And deep hard. Oh, man, I bet you felt so cool when those 15-year-old girls were giving you all that attention. Does it make up for all the rejection you felt when you were in high school? Hey, buddy. Maybe he's just a loser, bro. Like, this is all loser behavior. A 21-year-old talking to 15-year-olds is loser behavior for the record. You're a loser. You're pathetic. Honestly, loser. Go to therapy. Like, only a loser is hanging out with 15-year-olds at 21. Unless you grew up in a neighborhood full of kids and all the families know each other. See, that's very different. Okay? If you have siblings, or everybody, but at the same time, I'm not friends with my siblings' friends. Yes? I'm the older sister. But if you all grow up together as kids... Like still there's a, no, still there's a difference. My friends growing up, even though we all hung out each other, with each other as children, we didn't grow up and then still hang out with each other. Yeah. Like I don't hang out with my little brother's friends. Why would I hang out with them? Even though they're all in their twenties, why would I hang out with my little brothers? I don't hang out with my sister's friends, even though she's only five years younger than me. Like her friends are in a completely different age demographic. And even if I have friends that are 28 or 27 or 26, do I have friends that are that young? I don't know. I'd have to ask my friends. I forget how old everybody is. I don't think about it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I just, there's so much, there's so much, there's so much nuance. I can't even keep up because there's, I would need to detangle and deconstruct so much of this. Oh my God. I'm tired. You've graduated college. You shouldn't still be looking for validation from freshmen in high school. But if you're looking for validation from 15 year old girls in a way of talking about muck banging hard and deep. Oh my God, you know, am I crazy? No, I am going to keep that in. Uh, I shouldn't keep that in, should I? Oh, I will. Hey Zach, you know the entire audience isn't just 15 year old girls watching it. It can also be a 24 year old man looking at it with disgust because of what you've done. It's not looking great, man. It's not, it's really not. Now in response to all of this, Indiana did say he didn't groom me. She said that multiple times. And I just want to say again, whatever situation happened that she went through that made her feel like it was okay for this much older man to swoop in and emotionally comfort her in a vulnerable period of time in her life. Yeah, super weird. Should have been her mother, should have been a therapist. It shouldn't have been Zach. I agree with that. Life after they have known each other while she was in her early teenage years and he was in his early 20s. That is not acceptable behavior from him. And I don't care how much it- What did he say? What was that? And he was in his early 20s. That is not acceptable. Because of the fact that he dated her once she wasn't a minor. Okay, yeah, I agree with this, right? Like super inappropriate. Acceptable behavior from him. And I don't care how much it was nice for you in that moment. You don't have to accept what he did as wrong for it to have been wrong. And that's just the reality of it. Now I got one more video I want to show you of okay. Zach talking about Indiana. Ooh. My lover at the time. Actually, no, we were not in a relationship. Please don't click. I swear <laughs> my life. Was, she would one day be my girlfriend. Not my girlfriend when we started. It feels I like want to make that abundantly clear. Why is that? Can you explain why that's like just for the people? Because I think she was like 18, like, like fresh 18. Well, don't say fresh 18. <laughs> no, but that's why I'm making- To clear things up, Indiana and Zach started dating when she was 20 and he was 27. Okay, that's better than freshly 18. But also... Yeah, because we were not oh. together. Okay. Hell, I've dug myself in such a Just hole. Just say 18, though. I mean, you don't yeah, say I, fresh. <laughs> no, but... Yeah, I'm glad bro over there was holding him to the fire. Because he's... Mm, okay, let's rewatch that. Okay, I'm gonna be very critical. Let's see. I have to accept what he did as wrong for it to have been wrong. And that's just the reality of it. Now I got one more video I wanna show you of Zach talking about Indiana. My lover at the time, actually no, we were not in a relationship. Please don't click, I swear <laughs> my life. <laughs> Indiana. She would one day be my girlfriend, not my girlfriend when we started. It feels like- I wanna make that abundantly clear. Why is that, can you explain why that's like, just for the people- Cause I think she was like 18, like, like fresh 18. 
Well, don't say fresh 18. <laughs> no, but that's why I'm making it, because we were not <laughs> together. Okay, Hell, yeah. I've dug myself in such a just hole. Just say 18, though. I mean, you don't yeah, say I, fresh. <laughs> no, but... Yeah. I'm glad we're over there. This is what I mean when I say the love of your life, this isn't it. This is not the love of your life. You know what I mean? It cannot be this fucking hard to date the love of your life. You know, if it is the love of your life, you make it work, you do that thing. I can't tell if he feels pressured because he knows people are gonna hear it or if he hasn't truly had the conversation with himself to really feel comfortable with it or if he is trying to hide something. I cannot tell and I don't know because I can't read minds, but it could be any of those things. He could be so embarrassed and knows it looks bad, so he fumbles. He could genuinely have done something with her and he knows and he's trying to hide it or he... He just doesn't like he isn't I don't know maybe he hasn't really thought about it and like actually could say it with a big chest like yeah of course we did it what do you mean she was 20 she was legal what the fuck yeah I knew her growing up it's perfectly normal he doesn't seem that confident but it, why isn't he that confident like if it was because it sounds like he didn't grow up in the same bubbles that I grew up in where maybe it would have been normal to know somebody as a kid and then grow up and then you guys get back together later but if she was 20 when they started dating because she was with another guy before him. And then if she, like, if he thought like one day this girl's gonna be my girlfriend. Okay, I'm gonna say this. This is what my intuition is telling me. I don't think he's a groomer, but I think they absolutely probably were doing stuff or at least he was thinking about it while she was a minor. I'm gonna say that much. I don't think, and I'm trying to, I'm not gonna read his mind, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my guess of what's most likely based off the data possible. And we haven't finished the video yet, but I'm gonna say Zach, Definitely was probably thinking about her in that way. And he definitely probably hoped for an eventual sexual relationship with her because she's pretty and all that stuff. And they have connections and they laugh and they're so fun together. <laughs> and obviously they're broken up now because obviously this isn't the love of your life. This is just like a life lesson. I don't think anyone's probably a predator in this situation, but I think Zach's lack of discernment and his level of maturity or immaturity, I should say, lends him to being what I would call a risk to vulnerable people who he might feel compatible with because of his immaturity level and which younger people might be put in a situation to think, oh yeah, this older man, we definitely have things in common. What is a 27 year old and a 20 year old even doing together? What is a 27 year old and an 18 year old even doing together? What are you even doing? You are traumatized little humans, go to therapy. No mature, reasonable, well thought out adult is a 27 year old dating a 19 year old. Or I'm sorry, you're just not. Something is going on, figure it the fuck out. Unless, and this is the caveat I will give, you come from a very specific cultural bubble in which you are literally from the same village, same cultural background and have the same religion or same belief system. Like you are so on the same page culturally that it's not weird. Okay, I'll give a caveat because there's 8 billion people on this planet. I'm so sick of these fucking men. Useless. I was holding him to the fire because he said his lover at the time. But see, you know how much I would like to agree with this guy, but I can't because he keeps using the word groomer. Like, I would love to agree with this guy and go full on on Zach, but I can't because you keep saying groomer. And now I have to correct you because you're pissing me off. I would love to agree with this guy and just be like, Zach's a bad guy. But you're, you're fucking it up by calling him a groomer. And now I have to autistically correct you because you're doing the wrong you're using the wrong words you're using the wrong words it's pissing me off and now i look like a like i'm promo like defending some asshole because you're being an asshole and this is why we can't have nice things because you guys don't even know how to protect people correctly and now you're so dumb i slap you you're as dumb as zach is bro you keep calling zach dumb you're an idiot you're fucking dumb his lover and then being like, oh, wait, no, 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 she wasn't my lover. No, 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 she was like fresh 18. No, oh, she wasn't my lover. Your lover to be. I, I meant my lover to be. No, man, no, not accepting that. And Zach, I'm sure you've already drafted a comment like you did on all the other posts about you because you can't keep your trap shut. But I just want to say, maybe you're not a certified put, but what you are is somebody who fully displayed the five warning signs of groom. And then when that girl <laughs> was legal, you started dating her. And for me, 
That's enough to never want to support you or watch anything you ever do again. Oh, I never liked Zach to begin with. I'm certainly not going to watch him now, but I really don't like this guy. And I'm certainly not going to watch him. Jesus, he's so dumb. And to click not interested whenever you pop up on my FYP with some slow burn. Harriet says she was in an abusive relationship before getting with Zach, even had a protective order against her ex. This occurred when she was a minor. I think that doesn't necessarily mean Zach uh, knew about it, but she posted about it on TikTok. Okay. Burn romance with Tariami. By the way, pretty sure that's dead. And I feel like your career is too. Like, honestly, with this <sighs> stuff coming to light, there's no way that people are just gonna like look past this. It's so dramatically disgusting. And I'm sorry to Indiana. I'm really sorry that this situation happened. Clearly you don't find yourself to be the victim, but unfortunately, you know, what happened is what happened. And, and I feel the way I feel about him because of the evidence of what happened. Every possible excuse that he could have could be true, but he can't excuse the things that actually physically these people need to go to therapy we need to get therapists involved like real people who really want to help humanity and figure out why people get into these situations but jesus christ this is so weird happened that we have seen and i feel like i am losing my mind when somebody like this acts like it's not that big of a deal because blah, 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 blah. you're a little lizard on its back flailing your arms and legs around like a little fucking kermit the frog freak scrambling trying to hold on to one ounce of fame and the thing is zach people won't forget you but you're not going to be famous you're going to be infamous and the thing you're infamous for man why you got a hard on for zach bro Jesus, we get it. You like him. Wow. Is everything we've talked about, you absolute brain dead moron. Okay, anyways, thank you so much for watching this. Please subscribe. I'm heated right now. Absolutely not going to subscribe, my bro. I'm so sorry with peace and love, bro. I'm not subscribing to this horribly edited and researched video. Okay, let's see. It actually isn't that hard not to date the girl you babysat when you were 20 and she was 14. Okay, well. Hiring a grown man to edit videos of your 14-year-old daughter is wild and having him live under the same roof is actually insane. Where the fuck is the mom and all of this? How come no one pointed fingers? Exactly. Thank you, commenter. Just because you don't feel victimized doesn't mean you're not. Truth out loud sometimes. But you can't also, like, if you, maybe. Technically, but you also, I think it's like, it's a balancing act. You don't want to tell people they were traumatized if they weren't because that's denying their whole reality, which is so fucked up. And I even interviewed Dr. Kirkonda about this. And he said, not all people are traumatized by things that are traumatizing for other people. So you need to be careful. Okay. Like you've got to be careful because you don't know that, but you could be right. Even if you don't feel like you were, maybe you were, who knows, right? When I was 16, I had a 21 year old boyfriend. It wasn't until years later that I realized I was physically and emotionally abused. I suffer from PTSD and still have panic attacks. I, uh, when I remember him, that's hard. Go to therapy. I don't think I like being a minor in 2024 anymore. Yeah, dude, <laughs> bro. Why is everyone a groomer nowadays? They're not. Why is everyone a groomer? They're not. They're not groomers nowadays. Some people are groomers, but most people are actually just lacking discernment. They don't have the wisdom. They're not making good decisions, but they're not groomers. The poor woman, the point of getting groomed is you don't realize you were being groomed. Sincerely, someone who is groomed. That's just so fucked up though, because yes, but no, you can eventually realize you were groomed. Like gro people who are groomed do know eventually they were groomed. They can realize it. Um, the person who pisses me off the most is Indiana's mom, who in their right mind would allow an adult man to live with their teenage daughter and allow them to have that kind of relationship. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Who the fuck is this mom? So strange. Okay, so then we agree, like her mom, what the fuck was that? Again, groomer, file Nazi. I just feel like we're way too comfortable using these words and now they don't even mean anything. And that fine, I just find that incredibly frustrating because like, you're not going to help humanity. And look, I think... This is the problem is like, I am never here to help humanity. I'm here to help people. And if it helps other people, great. But humanity as a whole, it is a living organism that is evolving over time. It is constantly changing. It is constantly confused in a world that has normalized genocide and murdering people with bombs. Okay. I think we can calm down about the 21 and the 17 year olds in order to get people help. You have to be calm in moments of distress to get people the help they need. If you want to help people, you have to be you have to be helpful. And it's not helpful to ignore people when they tell you their story. It's okay to say, I think I disagree, but I'm willing to hear you out. It's also okay to say, that's really hard for me to see, but if you're telling me that's your situation, I could believe you. Life doesn't happen in the way you always think it will, but it's still happening. So uh, thanks Film Cooper, I won't be subscribing, no offense. And uh, I never liked Zach and I still don't. And shout out to Indiana. I hope she's doing well after everything.
I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Da 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 da